Xander Hall. Y'all know Xander Hall. But Xander Hall went up against a woman named Brittany, who previously... Yo, Xander Hall! Happy to see ya! Oh, Chud Logic just had Brittany on his stream? Okay, okay. Good to see you, Xander Hall. Thanks for coming by. Um, so, Xander Hall went up against this lady named Brittany. Brittany used to be the so-called left-wing host of a show called Politically Provoked, okay? Um, and poli now when I say left wing host, that is extremely like, I, I put that with like a lot of quotes. Some of you may remember that I once did one debate on politically provoked when they first sort of started their channel, they invited me to a uh, debate against a fascist named big Papa fascist. It was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, and unfortunately while the debate was very funny, the post-debate portion was, uh, very weird, okay? Uh, their audience was all Nazis, and all of the super chats were extremely fucked up things to say. For example, one of the super chats that, that they allowed through and asked me was, what age were you molested by your father? Wow. Sounds like they're running a great show over there, everyone, right? Um, yeah. Sounds fucking sick, right? Um, yeah, it was pretty bad. It's, uh, real bad. So, I, I didn't go back, oddly enough. What a surprise, right? Because keep in mind, that wasn't from the fascist I was debating. That was from their audience that they went forward to, uh, to, 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 to you know, they, they read, they, they approved that and then read that to me. Yeah, it's fucked. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't think very highly. Uh, turns out their server was a was a uh, Nazi den. Like, literally just crawling with Nazis. It was crawling with so many Nazis that, in fact, a uh, Big Papa Fascist denounced them because they were too Nazi. A guy whose name is Big Papa Fascist denounced politically provoked for being too fascist. Which is a little bit wild. So, that's just the context for who we're going to see. You, yeah, we'll find out. You'll see that. Their Discord literally got nuked by Discord twice because it was full of Nazis. Yes. Not kidding you. That's actually what happened. Um, so, let's let's do this. Let's do this. Okay? Let's, let's go watch this Xander Hall debate. Okay? We're going to watch it right here. Hey, here we go. We got it, everybody. This right here is Xander Hall. No, it's not Eminem. I recommend 1.5 speed. No, we're doing it raw. We're doing it fucking raw. You understand? Raw. Okay? I'm not fucking backing off. Debate review. Zan v. Brittany. All right, let's fucking do this. Let's fucking make it happen, okay? I'm gonna start, I'm gonna let this debate open right up. I'm gonna hit the bathroom and then we're gonna go. Let's do it! it what really annoys me is the fact that you can't talk about this because then you are like lambasted. This is horrible, horrible person just by pointing out uncomfortable truths. Why, why is that okay? I don't think you're calling out the, when you say things like I'm just pointing out uncomfortable truths that comes off as a dog whistle That's something that like right-wingers for a long time will have used as a as a defense okay. against any criticism is I'm just asking questions I'm just telling the 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 brutal honest truth. Really. I'm just telling it how it is mm -hmm. the uncomfortable truth Like it, it just it, it just comes off as a little sussy to me True it is a bit sussy It is a bit sussy All right I'll be right back. I'm gonna hit the bathroom. You guys hey, listen to Today we're debating immigration, and we are starting right now with Brittany's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Brittany. The floor is all yours. Okay. All right, so I did write something up. I don't normally like to read things because I'm a little blind, but I'm gonna do it anyways. 
So before I get my opening, I just want to say I'm not normally on this side of the debate. In fact, this is my very first debate. So this will be a new one for me. Hoping Xander Hall will be kind enough not to use those crafty little voodoo debate bro tricks on me. And have a good big discussion, which I think he will. But for those who don't already know me, I was once the left-wing host of Politically Provoked. Over the past year, that went from left-wing host to centrist host to now just host. Got into politics through Trump, hated him, thought he was the worst president to ever take office. I supported basically every left-wing policy you can think of. Open borders was one of those things. I've gone through a lot of the same views as most lefties have, and one of those has been the white guilt that we see everywhere. So I thought getting straight white men out of power would be a good thing, and white men have just been horrible for us. Then came the red pill and a guy named Little Timmy. Now, I'm hoping today Xander Hall might be able to unred pill me because I've been looking for somebody to do that. And as of yet, nobody has managed to get it done. So maybe you can be that guy. If you don't already know who Little Timmy is, he is a hypothetical character of what happens when white people become a minority. So basically, he is now the only white kid in a class of blacks, Latinos, and all the other groups we have living here. And every single minority group seems to have some sort of grievance against white people. And why shouldn't they, given our history, everything we are being pumped with, slavery, Jim Crow, CRT, all the horrible things white people have done, and all the anti-white rhetoric that's going through. And it's basically mainstream now. So it's not going to be good for little Timmy when he's the only white kid, and I don't think white people will be given the same protections as minority groups currently have. Because most of the sentiment you hear is, oh well, they have it coming. So if it's like that when we are still the majority, what's it going to be like when we are the minority? That kind of stuff really concerns me, and no one has been able to address those concerns, or ease some of those fears. So again, maybe Xander Hall will be able to change that, as I'm open to hearing it. One thing we can say is, white people becoming a minority is basically inevitable at this point. So for me, I want to slow down the process as much as possible, and closing the borders is a good first step. Now personally, I don't care about a multiracial and multicultural society, as I don't have any of my own issues with anyone else, and I have no hate in my heart for anyone. I wish it wasn't like this, but this is the reality, and a multiracial society has not worked. Lefties love to paint this ideal world we wish we lived in, but that doesn't tend to align with reality. And when you point those things out, you are called a racist, a Nazi, or a bigot, instead of just pointing out uncomfortable truths. Perhaps I never took any issue with this because I wasn't able to see the damage it was actually causing until someone pointed it out in a way that made sense. Not to mention everything that happened with the summer riots, which was also a huge wake-up call that made it clear to me I just don't like the direction things are heading. So as I started to think about it more and conversations I've had with other lefties, that kind of future became a pretty easy thing for me to see happening. Why we have so many white liberals pushing this narrative is beyond me, and I wish more lefties would wake up to how dangerous some of the rhetoric is and the kind of damage it is causing, but I used to be one of those lefties. So until someone can unred pill me, those days are over and it's time to close the borders. Xander Hall, you are up. <laughs> so you rush for that open. Unread pill. Mm. Of course, I had to eat food right as I fucking right as it gets into it. We'll keep going. Brittany, Brittany, and want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome, no matter what walk of life you are from. Thrilled to have you here, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for many juicy debates coming up. For example. Does Islam require the domination of, or I should say, does liberalism require the domination of Islam? I love that Zan hears that that question and just looks at the camera with concern. Does Islam require domi- Wait a second. And then he's just like, um. Between Destiny and Daniel Hikachu coming up at our in-person conference this month it's going to be juicy and you don't want to miss it so with that we're going to jump into xander's opening statement thanks so much for being with us the floor is all yours yeah i guess i don't really have much in the way of opening statements when it comes to a situation like this as Brittany said um the influx of of obviously non-white people into this country and many other white countries is going to continue to happen uh, just naturally this is the way that humanity has acted for a long time we're going to integrate we're going to True. um intermarry intermingle and what that's literally what humans do that's what we've done for all history there's like, this fucking idea of ethnostates is fucking stupid. It's never been a part of history except for out of, like, small chance issues and Nazis attempting and failing, by the way. No, nah, it's just something that's going... Small Dog Party, thank you so much for the gifted tier one sub. I'm going to update the list. I'm going to update the number soon. 
something to inevitably happen. Um, I think the main issue that I have with Britney's entire argument is that the onus is on her to prove that this is a real problem that's actually happening. Um, the reason why I struggle to create an opening statement, I guess, is because there's not much that I feel like I have to argue. Wolfgar69, thank you very much for the $10. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Thank you from the get-go, right? Yeah, happy to have you out of work. It's good for the economy. Seems that exposure to people of different races and ethnicities is good to prevent racism. Seems to help our society. You mentioned that uh, multiracial societies haven't worked. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but America is the most successful country on the planet Shrew! and is quite multiracial. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to say. Um, we can we can go back and forth if you want. I wrote down some of your points, and I guess if you want to, we can go one by one. Sure. You got it. Yeah. We'll just keep it an open conversation then. Did you want to address something in specific I said, or do you want me to? Kind of... Yeah, sure. Okay. Do, do you want to start with the uh, the little Timmy question? Sure. Yeah. So the funny thing about the little Timmy question or the little Timmy hypothetical is it's not even really a hypothetical. Stuff like that happens on both sides today. There are black students who are made fun of in majority white schools or whatever, and there are white students in majority black schools that get made fun of for being white. I, I don't know why you use this hypothetical or this little Timmy question as an example of how racial animus in this country could just suddenly flip sides and we could see a, an anti-white society. It just doesn't really seem like we're heading down that road. That kind of thing happens now. This seems like if you want to prevent a problem like this, the solution is exposure. People who are exposed to people of other races more often tend to be less racist. What you're advocating for, a, a, a shutdown in immigration, a slowing down of the uh, integration of different races and ethnicities into our society, is only going to result in more racially based tribalism. It's only going to result in more of that racial am animosity. Things like Jim Crow and things like segregation only increased the amount of, uh, of tension between the races. It didn't make things better. So right here, okay, imps, we can move on to the next segment. We can move on. Xander Hall just won the debate. That, it was that easy. It was that easy clap. Can we get some easy claps in chat? Can we get some fucking easy claps? That is, Xander Hall literally won the debate right there. There is nowhere that this can go from here except exactly where it goes, which is the cope zone. So what you are about to witness for the rest of this is, and we are going to watch the rest. I'm just kidding. We're not stopping right there. We're actually going to watch the rest, of course, um, because it's really fucking funny. But I just want you to know that right there, five minutes into the debate, the, there is no actual more debate to be had. What Xander Hall said is completely true. All of history, societies, ethnic, racial, gender, we've all melded together and we solve our problems actually relatively well. Uh, usually, it's when hyper, hyper hierarchical supremacists of some form or another take power that we end up seeing societies start to become racially uh, or ethnically and uh, or when we start to see societies fill with racial or ethnic animosity. Um, and, uh, and Xander Hall points out all of this. All of the arguments he's made are, are backed up, not just by data, but also by history. And, uh, and there's nothing more to be said. But what you will see now is a Nazi crying and coping and making emotional arguments and incredibly cringe jokes for the rest of this entire uh, show. Uh, thank you very much, Zale Song. It says a lot about these people that they cannot see two people with slightly different tints to their corporeal flesh bags function in a relationship where one is not subjugated by the other. True! Also, Taliesin Oberlander, I used to mod MDD's chat. These debates made me stop. I can imagine these debates are uh with nazis and shit get really toxic and in fact xander hall will call this out as we go on but of course i was i was joking we're gonna watch the rest i just want you to know that from here on out there is basically no argument to be made <laughs> by Brittany. and guess what the truth is she doesn't even try because you know why bother 
Oh wait, I forgot I can do this. There we go. Now you can see Brittany and we'll move the site subs down here for now. Look at that. There we go. Now we can see Brittany. Let's go. Do you think there is no anti-white hate that goes on? Mm. Of he course literally there is. he literally just said that it happens sometimes already in schools that don't have diversity. If you're the only white kid in a school, you might get picked on because all of the people who are there might have never met somebody who's white before. So you might get picked on. Zan literally just said that. Just said that. Matter of fact, I've been debating a lot of these people, and funnily enough, you mentioned that it was mostly white liberals pushing this sort of anti-white narrative, and I think we disagree on a, a lot on what this anti-white narrative may be, but one thing I do want to point out is that there are people that I call out that claim to be on the left who are absolutely anti-white, and I think also anti-black. I think if you are racist towards white people, if you are against the idea of um, races integrating, then you are just as much a danger to the rights and the liberty of white people as you are to black people. An example of this is Hoteps. Hoteps are uh, radical black separatists who want an ethno state and will work with neo-Nazis to achieve it. Um, I think that type of behavior, that actual anti-white racism you see from that group, um, is not coming from white liberals at all. They hate liberals. They hate BLM. Uh, these contemporary left-wing movements that are advocating for racial justice have little to no connection to actual uh, substantial groups that push anti-white right. anti hate. He's correct. Is there white guilt out there? Are there cringy people out there who behave in a certain way because they're white and give black people a pass on anything? Absolutely. And I think on a case-by-case -case basis, it's worth working against those people. But to just put up a shield and say, no, we got to stop immigration. We got to cut down on it. We got to stop this white replacement thing, which we can get into more in a minute because I don't even agree with the, with the Ooh, theory there. Um, I don't know. It, it just seems like you're going about solving this potential problem in the exact wrong way how is it the wrong way i mean again because it's literally mainstream right now for you to be he literally just explained how it doesn't work and why it's the wrong way she literally didn't listen this is what's so frustrating about debating with right-wingers because you actually cannot have a conversation most of the time. He literally just took the time to lay out his exact argument against it, and she just goes, but why? Basically prompting him to have to say it again, and he's going to say it again, of course. Uh, Anti-white, it's okay. Like, you see it Can you everywhere. give me an example of mainstream anti-whiteness? Like, like, welcome, uh, Farflight. Happy to have you. Everybody, welcome first-time chat imp, Farflight. Farflight's been lurking, but is finally a member of the chat. Give some hugs to the new chat imp. Welcome, Farflight. Welcome. Or something they were talking about. I would have to actually, like, look this up, but I remember there was an article about how they were, um... They were talking about anti-white stuff. I have a bunch of quotes, actually, that I can pull up, too, if you want to, that are very mainstream. Um, let me pull them up. But what did they say? I mean, you can yeah, criticize you. any individual case. That, Like, I'm fine with that. The problem is that you're broadening this to be a massive well, issue with the left. Is. Like, the, the entire idea behind at least what I advocate for is a rising tide raises all ships. We're not trying to take white people out of power and replace them with black people in power. You We're not trying to, to take examples? white people out of the country and replace them. I'm sure you've got plenty of examples of oh. people on the left being no, either... But I mean... uh, uh, so, okay, really funny. Um, this, this is actually, it's really funny. The rising, the rising tide lifting all boats is actually a neoliberal byline. However, I actually don't care, believe it or not. I know some people will get mad that Zan, excuse me, it's a JFK line, actually. It is a pretty solidly neoliberal line. However, I think in this case, it is perfectly workable. I think it accomplishes to say what he's trying to say. He's saying that if we allow people to live together and become familiar with each other in harmony, that everyone will be better off. And I think in this case, in this particular context, it's fine.
enabling anti-white racism or even per it's, perpetuating no, I mean, it? Why well, not call me, those instances just, out individually? Let me just show you a few, a few, a few examples of like how okay. mainstream it is and how okay it is. So um, you had, let's see here, we got from um, the Don Lemon saying white men are a domestic terror threat. Anderson Cooper, uh, whites becoming minority is an exciting transformation for our country. True, Mando, it is. Even the most liberal. So wait, let's go through these one by one. The first one, Don Lemon, Don Lemon saying that white men are a domestic terror threat. Guess what? Statistically, that is just as accurate as all of the other bullshit that these people say. Now, could you argue that perhaps that's a little bit irresponsible wording? Yeah, maybe you could. But guess what? The FBI agrees. <laughs> This is amazing! What the hell? This is so good! This is so good, Danny! This is fine. <laughs> that is so dope! Danny, that's so fucking dope. I will retweet that if that goes on Twitter. That is so sick. Let us, uh, and then, okay. So, first one was Don Lemon saying that white men are a domestic terrorist threat which is just true. Um, yeah, it's a little prejudiced, I guess, but I don't think that ca counts as racist or anti-white. I don't think that, I think that's ridiculous. Second, the second one, what was the second one she said? She said the second one was, hold on, let's see. Saying white men are a domestic terror threat. Anderson Cooper, uh, okay, white Anderson becoming Cooper. minority is an exciting transformation for our country. It is an exciting transformation for our country. That means there are more people here with more diverse backgrounds than ever. That's exciting. Having a country that's not all white is exciting. As somebody who who doesn't only like white people, that is an exciting venture. Why are they so obsessed with CNN? Because they have brain rot, okay? You have to understand something about conservatives. Let me give you let me give you a little let me give you a little moment here, okay? Something that a lot of us have forgotten in the last few months, okay? Something that a whole lot of us have forgotten in the last few months, okay? I want you to understand that uh that that um conservatives have no fucking clue what they're talking about. They repeat the same lines that they're given because that's how hierarchy works. When you believe in a hierarchical worldview, your superiors tell you what to think. You repeat those things. That's how it goes. That's how it goes for all of them. Every conservative is exactly like this. Now, sometimes there's squabbles. Sometimes there's inconsistencies. Sometimes conservatives make bad decisions. But that's how their ideology works. You listen to the people who are rightfully above you. You want to look at what the, the core tenets of right-wing thought are? It's a belief that hierarchies are natural and good. Okay? So it should make sense why they fixate on the same things that their intellectual leaders tell them to fixate on. And they always do. So there you go. Let's continue. Fuck. Van Jones, even the most liberal, well-intentioned white person has a racist virus in his, in his or her brain that can be... So who is this guy again? Van Jones? Isn't that another guy? Isn't that another CNN guy? CNN. Another CNN guy. So this is just CNN and individual people saying potentially, like out of context, potentially questionable things. But I don't even think that's wrong. I imagine that what was being said there is that, yeah, racism is in everyone. He activated at an instance. Uh, John Brennan, I am increasingly embarrassed to be a white male these wait, days. Wait, wait, I mean, wait, I can keep wait, going wait. on and on. Hold on, hold on. Okay. You don't, you don't have to read me quotes. Well, I'm from just telling you that it's this, prominent like, people who said iffy things. Hold on, this is literally mainstream to be anti-white, and if That's it's not, that okay. way, that is not what mainstream to be anti-white means. Notice the jumps. So this is something you'll notice with conservatives all the time. This is something we encounter frequently. They will say things like, this one time, someone got treated badly for wearing no mask. That means that it is mainstream uh, to believe that all people who don't wear masks should die. That's not what anyone said. 
one person may have said something bad, um, but that's not what mainstream means. And randomly chosen quips from a person who has some mainstream uh, representation does not mean rain mainstream. In fact, I bet if you went and looked at the responses to those lines, there would be oceans of criticism. And I know there are because I've seen them. I've heard these exact examples brought up by conservatives, by Nazis, over and over and over again. It's so fucking frustrating. But conservatives love to do this. They love to do this. And in fact, it's really funny because something you're going to hear in a few minutes is that um, Brittany is going to talk about seeing videos of people being beat up. And this is something I've heard even from liberals I know. One of the things that conservatives like to do in their propaganda is they will spread around videos of, of anti-white hate crimes that are just blurry videos of like some black people beating up some white person, no context provided, no location provided, just a scary video. And people see that and go, oh my God, I might be next. It's fear. Fear and emotional tactics is all that they have. And all of their arguments, even if they seem structured, ultimately boil down to that. And you're going to see this for the rest of the debate. There's a reason why I said that Xander Hall won this debate in the first five minutes. And that's because for the rest of this, all you are going to hear is fear-mongering. Just fear-mongering. Do I dabble in fear-mongering? No, I really, really don't. In fact, I, I don't dabble in fear-mongering to the degree that whenever we have a fucking doomer segment that involves a lot of fear, I follow it up with laughter because I don't think that fear-mongering is effective. I think that talking about things that can be scary, that are concrete, and that we need to respond to is really important. But fear-mongering is when you take a hop, skip, and a jump from seeing a scary video on the internet to concluding that we need an ethno-state. Do you see what the difference is? Do you see how, how huge the gulf is between people talking about something that's scary or something that's dangerous and taking a hop, skip, and a jump to saying, well, I saw a scary video once, so now we need an ethnostate. And that is what she's saying. She's saying, yeah, but these three people said things that could potentially be construed as anti-white if you, if you think about it really hard and in a certain context, and they're... They have a big platform, and this means that there's an anti-white message being pushed all over the country. No evidence, just a paranoid tear. When we are the majority, what is it going to be like when we're the minority? Don't you think that maybe the tendency for people to engage in rhetoric that maybe pokes fun at or is sometimes even hostile towards white people might be because our society has come to an understanding broadly that um, the amount of objective harm caused by jokes or comments at the expense of white people typically don't have that same outcome. I think right that's now. why you see a lot less, hold on, hold on. Okay. I think that's why you see a lot less pushback against that kind of thing. Is it okay? No, I don't know the context every quote that you just listed to me, but if the context is as you said it was, then I don't like any of those people and I don't like what they said. And you can call those we people can. out on their individual- We can fearmonger about white names. The white name hordes are rising up. They threaten to destroy our beautiful, colorful chat. We must destroy all white names by gifting subs and by subscribing to Demon Mama. <laughs> like what they've said but i don't think there's a trend in the left to it's be okay i'm just teasing white. i don't think it's it's nearly as big as you're making out to be and trust me listen Brittany, mm -hmm. i get called no lip white boy by hoteps and literal anti-white racists every single day <laughs> uh, uh, hoteps i'm sorry zan i'm so sorry <laughs> lippin Oh, that's terrible. Are a radical group of um, usually black activists that typically call themselves black separatists. They're in favor of a black ethno state, and they're willing to work with neo Nazis and white supremacists to achieve it. So maybe that's... Got a, they, they typically hate Jewish people and and stuff like that. They're basically black Nazis. So basically, these are people that are also looking out for their own self interest and realize that being around. Oh, this is the moment. This was right where I got that from. By the way, this is the moment where I snapped it. Because he knew! He got her! He fucking got her! He fucking got her! 
She's like, wait, they actually sound like um, they're just looking out for their self-interest. She just said two seconds ago she didn't even know what they were. He's, this is, this is a, what, what you're witnessing here is a, um, is an advanced Alden, okay, maneuver. This is an advanced Alden maneuver. By the way, Capo, thank you very much for the gifted tier one sub. Thank you. Um, this is, this is an advanced Alden maneuver. Zan could have said anything here. He could have made up a word. He could have said the, the Blotsies, Okay. And said they were the black Nazis. He could have called them the Blotsies. And she would have been like, well, it's actually, it kind of sounds like they're, um, they're looking out for their, their own self-interest. Because she's in a position where she has to defend ethnostaters no matter who they are. So, even though he did use a real group, this is ultimately an Alden maneuver. Because she admitted and how, now is talking about a group she just admitted she didn't know was existed. And they might not. For all she knows, that might not be a real group. Um, people that are going to hate them is not really working out for them either. I mean, I don't know if that's technically a um, horrible thing. I think maybe it's just kind of, boom, you know, self-preservation on their own boom. parts. And Sussy! Um, I mean, they, I don't know what hating the jews and and claiming that uh i don't know about uh, what, what's her that. name what, what uh i'm trying to remember her name um she was in the holocaust she was in the attic she wrote the book and frank yeah, yeah and frank <laughs> um they hate and Fra listen all right I'm, I'm tired okay uh they hate and frank they think she was a fake jew and deserved to die in the holocaust i don't know what that has to do with self-preservation but uh oh well, yeah i, I, I mean, don't know about all that but i have seen some of um these like black nationalists who kind of push for a lot of the same things that some of the white nationals will push for where they want to separate and i don't know if that's such a bad thing why live with people uh -oh. thank you i mean I, do you think white people hate black people i think that Probably. there are a lot of problems that happen in this country due to mul a multiracial society that we can't so notice the notice the logical path of a nazi uh sometimes Black people and white people don't get along, which means that black people and white people don't get along, which means that black people and white people need to live separately. Actual, actual toddler brain jumps in logic. Just, oh, a black person and a white person could fight. That means we have to be separate. It is such a cowardly, cowardly approach. By the way, Wolfgar69, thank you very, very much for the incredibly generous gifted tier one sub. Thank you very, very much. Also, I got to update this. Let's update this um, list. address because we are, there's so much infighting. I was looking up actually for this debate. I was looking up what the 10 happiest we countries by a whole 10. are. You want to know what they are? Can I give them to you? I'm going to give them to you. Uh, here we go. I'm pretty sure they're like this is Scandinavian really fucking countries. I'm right? going to do it. <laughs> so number one, Switzerland. Number two, Iceland. Number three, Denmark, Norway, Canada, Finland, Netherlands, Sweden, New Zealand, Australia. Do you send a, send a theme there? Hmm? Yeah. So wait. What's the theme? Can we listen to that list again? Switzerland, number two. Countries are. You want to know what they are? Can I give them to you? I'm gonna give them. All I'm right. Pretty sure they're like Scandinavian countries, I'm right? I'm gonna do it, European Sander. Countries. <laughs> so, number one, Switzerland. Number two, Iceland. Number three, Denmark. Oh, no. Oh, and from the from the YouTube chat with a jail song, the alabaster gecko thinks that if her and the doughboys get their male island, she will be crowned sour cream supreme, queen of the unseasoned ones. True! That's unironically what's in her mind. It's sad. Norway, Canada, Finland, Netherlands, Sweden, New Zealand, Australia. Do you send a, send a theme there? Hmm? Yeah, so what's the theme of New Zealand? Yeah, New Ze Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, Canada, all racially like racially and ethnically incredibly diverse countries. What? Like what? Yeah, New Zealand is not even close. New Zealand has a huge native native population. What the Melbourne has more Greeks than Athens does. Yeah, what the fuck is this dumb bitch talking about? Okay, something you should know. Again, all Nazis are fucking stupid. <clears throat> Even not guys, here's a secret. Ready? All Nazis are fucking stupid. Even the ones who are accomplished because you have to be stupid 
to be a Nazi. You have to be an anti-intellectual in order to come to those conclusions. It is the, you have to stop your brain from thinking fully in order to become a Nazi. You can be tricked into it, but you cannot remain a Nazi unless you shut your brain off to new information because Nazism is based off of fantasy. Yes, but that's what I'm talking about, nuts. To be groomed into being a Nazi is to be denied all kinds of conflicting information. It collapses very easily because there are all kinds of holes in Nazi narratives. Keenox with the tier one sub. I'm unable to catch streams live that often, but I got to support one of my absolute favorite streamers. Keenox, thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Even if you can't make it live, you're appreciated. VOD viewers are poggers, okay? Let's continue. You could also be a grifter, yeah, but uh, that's, uh, okay, we'll talk about that, okay? Most of them are social. Viet Palm says her take is brain dead. Switzerland is made up of three very distinct groups, German, French, Italian. Yeah, I know. Democracies with a lot of Yeah, but maybe they are like so that because so they're secure, also social safety countries nets. that are able to address a lot of those issues. You know that do you know there's studies that show when you are scared you become more conservative. When you are liberal, you're gonna become um when yes, you think you're and you, people are afraid of the unknown and what you're advocating for is to there. make brown people more unknown to white people and vice versa. I'm, you're all you're at what you're advocating for, all the all the data and everything that we've collected having to do with exposure to other races has shown that contact with people who aren't the same race as you it just explicitly just massively decreases the likelihood of you being racist or holding racist ideas like what you're at what you're advocating for right now will only make different races more afraid of other races because they're going to be more unknown or less familiar i mean i see like i get that at this point there's nothing we could really technically do about this um what? i'm not somebody who's saying oh let's go round up all the people that um are different races or whatever and send them back i'm not I, I, i'm really sal kitty says literally all of europe including m almost every scandinavian country is a part of the schengen agreement it's open borders throughout Europe, but no, they think Europe is just one race, don't they? Literally every country is a distinct culture and people. They all intermingle. Fuck, Europe might be more or as diverse as America. Nazis are racists. They're racist even to their own people. They box their own people, quote unquote, into terrible boxes. So yeah, they do not understand history because if they looked into history, they would realize that Nazism is a childish worldview, a childish worldview inspired entirely by fear of the unknown of people who are different than you. And they're different than you on fictional pretexts. It's completely ridiculous. So yeah, they don't know anything. But I do think that we can kind of slow down the process of how fast this is happening because what's happening and I'm noticing it big time and again be, I know people don't believe me, but I really was left wing. I was very left wing and I had all these policies. I was for open no. borders. I didn't see any problems with this, but maybe it was the the riots that happened that kind of like freaked me out and then um, hearing it in a way that really did resonate, but what do you think is going to happen when you are bringing in all these different people and you are teaching them how bad white people are and all the bad things that white people are? And do you think that they're not going to end up hating white people? What what uh what are they teaching in school that you think is making people hate white so, people? So I was actually I so every time I talk about critical race theory, I'm getting different definitions. I feel like maybe that's somewhat to do with the fact we live in a country where every state kind of teaches things differently, so you don't really know exactly what each state is doing. But I did look up, okay, what critical race theory, and here's what it is. So critical race theory is an intellectual movement and a framework of legal analysis according to which race is a culturally invented category used to oppress people of color and the law and legal institutions of the United States are inherently racist insofar they function to... Gayfesh says, just right now, check New Zealand versus USA racial makeup. Whites are a similar per percentage in both countries. Yup. These people are fucking stupid. They're fucking stupid. They literally have a cartoon idea of the world that has to confirm their pre-existing worldview. So to them, New Zealand and Australia are white ethnostates, even though that's factually false. 
they have to believe that because it backs up their previously existing prejudice create and maintain social political and economic inequalities between white people and non-whites and then mm -hmm. hold on um why is critical race theory important Critical race theory is important because it potentially provides a more realistic understanding of white racism in the U.S. as not merely a set of negative attitudes toward other racial groups, but also a body of law and legal practices whose real-world effect is the oppression of people of color, especially African Americans. These things being taught, like, I'm sorry, but these things being taught in our schools, showing how bad white people are and all these horrible things that white people are doing and all They're the not history. teaching and this in schools. The, thing, the things that are getting taught in schools, the things these Republican politicians are trying to clamp down on and ban in our schools are things like reading about Ruby Bridges and MLK. That's legitimately uh, what they're trying to ban. They don't want they don't want um, slavery yeah, to be taught. They don't literally. want Jim Crow or segregation to be taught. What you're advocating for, what you're saying right now, and I, I know you won't say it, but it's what you mean. You, you believe that teaching students the actual history of this country, a history that unfortunately does involve white people doing a lot of really bad, horrible, racist shit. I'm sorry, but that's just the history of our country, and mm. that's the history of a lot of countries out there. If teaching the truth results in having this outcome, then we need to engage in different types of rhetoric to help combat whatever white guilt or anti-white sentiment that you may think is becoming a huge problem. There is people out there that are like that, and like I said, argue against them individually. But what you're arguing right now, at least it seems to me, is that teaching kids the reality of what this country has, has been and mm -hmm. what has happened is going to result in people becoming more anti-white and thus we need to either not teach that or just keep non-white people out of the country or find some way to slow down the influx of non-white people into the country because God knows what happens if they learn that uh, white people did slavery. You know, yeah. they, might, they might go out there and this reminds me like, I'm sorry and I don't mean to be like condescending or mean or anything, but this reminds me, I was in fourth grade. Okay, everyone, all imps, <clears throat> all imps, I want you to pay close attention to what is about to happen. What you are about to witness is one of the most epic dunks I have ever seen in this debate space. So pay close attention, okay? I'm going to rewind just a tiny bit. I want you to pay close attention. This is, a, this is fucking great, okay? And I'll explain why after, but you'll understand. It's fucking sick. Here we go. Let's do it slow down the influx of non-white people into the country because god knows what happens if they learn that uh white people did slavery you know yeah. they might they might go out there and this reminds me like i'm sorry and i don't mean to be like condescending or mean or anything but this reminds me i was in fourth grade and uh i was like i think i was nine years old it was 2008 um and obama had just gotten elected it was the day after the election you know obama that morning had been announced like yep uh, obama's new president and uh we were on the playground fourth grade and there's this girl that i went to school with named eden sitting on a uh, bench on the playground crying and I walk up to her and I ask her, why are you crying? And she says she's scared that Obama is going to bring back slavery, but for white people, and it's going to force white people to become slaves as payback for like slavery. And she just, she was crying her eyes out. She fully believed this. And this is what this reminds me of. That thought process is what this reminds me of. Do you believe that like the minority groups in this country are going to try to take revenge on white people? Can we just take a second? Can we just fucking take a second and acknowledge how insanely orbital, uh, how insanely good that orbital strike of a fucking dunk was? Okay, so I just listened to you talk about all these things that you're fear mongering. I, I, you know, it really reminded me of an experience. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in fourth grade. It was a Wednesday, in fact, a bright Wednesday morning, and the fog was rolling in. And there was a four-year-old on, on a stool who was crying. And she said, and I walked up and said, what's wrong? What's wrong, little girl? And she said, Obama's going to turn all white people into slaves. And Brittany has nothing. They're just, boom. This remind, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be condescending, but you remind me of a four-year-old I met in fourth grade absolutely motherfucking incredible yes this is literally the image okay cherry this image right here i was screaming 
for this image to come up on the screen. I was literally, when I was watching this debate with Doe and Fawn, they can tell you, I was like, we need this image. We need this fucking image right here. This is the one. <laughs> this is the image that was absolutely necessary during this debate. And there it is. There we have it. Fucking beautiful. Just fucking perfect. Zan's orbital strike resulting in the alternate future. Wait, I'm sorry. Can you say the last part again? You said that um, a white person was worried that Obama... Wait, I'm sorry. When I, when I was she in couldn't fourth... even... Oh, that is the sound right there. That floundering is the sound of somebody... Okay, have you ever seen, like in a boxing match, have you ever seen someone get stunned from a punch? Have you ever, have you ever seen that happen? Like, if you ever watching boxing and somebody gets hit and they go... And they're literally stunned. You've somebody somebody in chat knows what I'm talking about when you that is what just happened. She goes I, I, Can you say that again? I'm sorry. She could had no response Holy shit, holy shit stun locked absolutely just boom. Grade uh -huh. one of my classmates the day after Obama got elected right. I went to school and it was, uh, I think it was on a Wednesday. We don't have to I do went the to whole the... setup. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I just told you the story. One of my classmates, she was white, sitting on the, on the bench at recess, crying because she thought that as payback for slavery. Oh, oh yes, I need to thank, I need to do a thank you for this uh, donation. Thank you very much. A lot of apples for the gifted two tier two, or tier one subs. Also, thank you very, very much to Seska for the five gifted tier one subs. Thank you so very much, truly. Deeply appreciate that. You all make this possible. Thank you very much. Obama was going to bring back slavery for white people and enslave white people. Okay. And it just, it seems like, and I'm not saying what you're, that what you're claiming is on the same level of ridiculousness as that, though it's close, but I, I feel think like the thought process is similar. I feel like you're gaslighting me a little bit right now, Xander. Like, I really do, because I feel like, I mean, I've been seeing this happen a lot more, and I see the anti-white hatred that keeps rising, and the fact that, again, it's so mainstream, and it's okay, and we Oof. are still the majority. So Oof. I think that when you take into account the fact we are going to become a minority, and if you look at other countries where this is happening, okay. yes, okay, I know that like South Africa and Rhodesia and all this stuff is uh, pointed to, and they were technically, what? white people were always the minority, but black people did have a grievance against white people there, and the second that they were able to take any kind of control, they they did, and like they it wasn't good for white people, and think about I just want you to imagine the level of, of fucking white fragility you have to be on to fucking look at South Africa and go, well, yeah, but the prob the real problem was that when apartheid ended, there were angry black people. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. Again, Nazis have toddler brains. Just violent toddler brains. That's it. Stupid, angry, violent, hateful toddlers. About the grievances that the black that black people here are going to have are far greater than you're going to have over in those countries where they weren't slaves or anything. Do you um, think do you think the the socio-political position of black people in this country is comparable to that of South Africa? I think that that black people have a fucking grievance. Like okay, when you talk about okay, say you want to go for um people who have been oppressed which like you know, you got the Holocaust Jews and stuff. Jews have like actually come out of that and they are um, you know, they've done very well for themselves. So the <laughs> Oh my god. The Jews came out of the Holocaust. I'm quoting here. Don't fucking take me down for this. I'm quoting Brittany here. The Jews made out well from the Holocaust. Not a Nazi, though. Not a Nazi, okay? Brittany of politically provoked, definitely not, not a Nazi, but just with a straight face, said that the Jews made out well from the Holocaust. Can we just like, 
can we, ah, oh, I don't even know. How am I supposed to respond to something so stupid? Grievances that they could possibly have are going to be um, not quite the same. Whereas black people never really have been able to get out of um, what has happened. It's gone from generation to generation to generation, and they have been stuck in this. Um, and so that's carried on for sure. But mm -hmm. one thing, like I also think of with slave. What do you think, um, like child abuse and stuff, was like back during uh, the time? Of <laughs> this was my face. What do you think child abuse was? What? Slavery. Do you think that it was okay for parents to, you know, like use a belt or to um, beat their child? I mean, that was kind of somewhat the norm, wasn't it? What? Discipline, uh, what? As far God as discipline? Knows, God knows my mom whipped out the belt if I so much as as, as talked back, okay? Right. Trust me, I, 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 I uh, had plenty a, uh, a, a beating as a child, so I can confirm that still happens today. Um, right. So I don't know if that analogy will work for me. It's a bit more frowned upon, like, you can't be used. Do you see how stupid Brittany sounds and looks here? I'm really sorry about that, Zan. I'm glad you're in a better place. Fuck that shit. That's, that, that fucking beatings are child abuse. That's fucking terrible. Also, Brittany stepped into shit right there. That was a trap card. And Brittany, that you didn't even play. That trap card was still in your deck, and Brittany took it out of your deck and put it on the board for you, and then stepped in it. Using, you know, a belt to, like, a, you can get um, arrested if you do something like that. You use an actual tool to mm -hmm. um, discipline your child. Okay. Right? Yeah, sure. Wait, I want to ask you a question. I, I don't know if this is related to where we're going, but I guess this is just, like, the fundamental question I have for you. Okay. So right now, in the world, mm -hmm. in America, right now, there are majority black schools where a few white kids go there and exactly the little Timmy question happens to them. And that type of behavior comes from, at least so it seems, uh, sociologists seem to agree, seems to come from the segregation of our society on an economic level. Um, black people in this country are typically relegated to poorer neighborhoods that are typically majority non-white. And so when you have like one or two white kids that go that are zoned to a school in a black neighborhood, mm -hmm. then there's only going to be a couple of white kids and then like a bunch of black kids, right? Mm -hmm. And when you when you feel that different, when you when you stick out that much, you may be the target of bullying. And that's a thing that happens now. So with what mm -hmm. I said before, we know that exposure decreases people's uh, racism, basically. When you're exposed to people of a different race, you tend to be less racist. Wouldn't the solution or the policy you should be advocating for, shouldn't it be one of um, restoration, or sorry, um, a revolution of our systems, a uh, either fixing or completely tearing down and recreating of the systems in this country <laughs> yes, that result in that true, disparity and that economic true. segregation so that we have well, tear a that more shit integrated down. society. Rebuild like, from the Your ashes. neighbor across the street is Asian, the guy down the streets uh, from Mexico, the guy uh, up the streets from Puerto Rico, your ne yet next door neighbor is black. Don't you think that when no. neighborhoods are far more no. multicultural, don't you think you're going to have less bullying no. for this type I think, of thing? No, I think there's going to be a lot more infighting. Um, and I think I've Why? seen... I, because I think that You're, that's just like... You just feel that way. Literally, everything we know says that's not the case. That's not the case. The more in the closer proximity that white people and black people live in, the better they get along. Because they learn about cultural, about family, about history differences, and they become aware of one another and friends with one another literally just feels over reels. Oh, hey, Fawn, would you mind refilling my soda for me? Yeah, okay. Uh, Diet Coke and a Coke, if possible. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Yeah, the only honest answer, Capo says, the only honest answer here is, well, I am a racist. If I see a black person, I want them far away from me. I don't understand that my racist idiocy is abnormal. Yes, they don't care that it's abnormal. They just, they want to project it onto everybody else, of course. They don't really care whether it's normal or not. They just want you, they just want to tell everyone who is racist that everyone else is racist too. Yeah. Human nature, that you're going to have those kind of, you're going to be wanting self-preservation. You are going to have infighting. And this is exactly what we're seeing in America in general. We are no, unable to address no, this just so isn't many... borne out in the data. This, it, is... Yeah, it's, this is just not true. 
there isn't it is not true there have been some local spikes in racial animosity towards asian people because donald trump kept specifically saying that covid was the was caused by china and american racists are fucking stupid but that is Brittany's style of doing things leading to that animus. On all other fronts, we know that animus is down. Racial animus is on a downtrend, a big downtrend. And it spikes back up only when racists use their position of power to put in racist policy and stoke racial animus. Weird how that works, right? Weird. Almost like if you have a faction of the world that is hyper hierarchical and believes that you just have to worship the God Emperor Trump and God Emperor Trump is a racist fuck, they'll be racist fucks too. Weird how that works. No, but it's the literally, data. are you kidding me? There's so many problems we cannot address because we are constantly infighting over stupid shit. Like the poor people, poor people poor have blacks, less blacks, racial blacks, tension and Sanders, racism Sanders, 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 when they live together. Let Brittany talk. Let me let Brittany talk. Okay. Otherwise, right, let's so, get into two minute segments. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, so yeah, no, we have um. As far as like uh, black and white people, poor people, they probably have a lot of uh, economic- By the way, condescension like that only works if you're winning. If you're losing, condescension sounds like cope. Condescension morphs into cope if you're losing. And she's losing hard. And everybody can see it. Um, in common. A lot of economic issues in common. And yet they are completely on the opposite ends. A lot of um, white people in general are willing. Is there any policy actually that you would be willing to sacrifice economic gains um, to achieve? Can I think about it? A policy that would sacrifice yeah. economic gains to achieve? Yeah. I honestly like i said before the policies i advocate for are ones that are that are like a rising tide that raids, raises all ships right like uh, one of the biggest examples that i brought up just on stream recently is um a way that black people are kept down and a policy that would help both black people and white people and people of every race is um the current federal criminalization of marijuana means that states where dispensaries are allowed to exist and you can sell marijuana legally um unfortunately as long as it's federally legal, banks will not loan to people who need a loan to start a business, which means yep. that the marijuana industry, marijuana being a drug that black people in this country have been disproportionately policed and arrested it's and a really good point, for, by the way. despite not using it more than white people for a very long time, um, you would think that like in these states where you have dispensaries and weed being legal, that like the black community in these, in these areas could possibly see some level of uh, recovery because of that. But unfortunately, due to its federal criminalization, you can't get loans you have to have the capital at your expenditure already to be able to start a dispensary and you can only operate in cash and there's just a lot of roadblocks in the way just federally legalizing weed and making it so that like anybody could go get a loan to start a, a dispensary like they could any other business is just that would literally help everybody and black people these are the types of policies that i advocate for none of the policies you're going to see me pushing for are going to be about taking white people out of power and putting black people in their place this is in my opinion an incredibly good an incredibly good segment of this debate for for xander hall okay like one of the strongest xander hall laid out right there what i would call a perfect elevator pitch for legalization from a perspective from a critical race analysis i know i know he didn't call it that but that's what it was he took critical race analysis looked at the issue of drug legalization and then synthesized that on the spot into the perfect elevator pitch for why the fuck we should push for federal decriminalization and federal legalization what just a masterful move i think that was very good and there was nothing Brittany could say to that because it was it was delivered well and it was informed and it's very, very difficult to make arguments against these things which are borne out in data. Well done, Xander Hall. That was a really good hit there. That's no. not what anybody anybody I, I, who's I, I sane on the left so. is advocating for. No, I wouldn't think I wouldn't think that would be anything that you would advocate for, of course. Um, but I'm just saying, like, 
I'm hmm. sure there are policies. I mean, I don't know if technically that was one of them, but I know there are policies that people would be willing to sacrifice some economic gains to achieve. Um, a lot of people what? are what? willing to do that when it comes, you know, to immigration. Yeah, I guess you could say that in the short term, um, immigration is an economic gain for the country. But some people wrong. It's an economic gain in the short term and the long term. Like a lot, like a huge gain, as in you literally in a country like America, you need immigration. You need it. She's just stupid. She's just pull this this entire conversation from the moment that I paused this five minutes in and said that Zan won has just been feels over reels and cope. There is not a single fact based or even rationality-based argument going on here. At all. Just feelings. People are also going to be pushing the fact that we don't want to become a minority in our own country. When people tell you, oh, okay, well, um, why don't you just go move to one of these like white countries or whatever, it's kind of, I mean, isn't that like exactly the point? We're being run out of our own country. Jesus, can you hear the dryer? Is it loud? The way, yeah, I can hear it a little bit, but it's okay, not I, too, I, I might it's like barely go, like, in the background. Because, hold on a second, maybe not. All right, sorry. Uh, All right. I think yeah, you, you said we are being run out of our own country. Nobody's being run out. This is actually, I think now's a good time to tackle this. The idea of replacement. Now, the term replacement necessarily has to be referring to generational generationally on a generational I, level people of a, of a different i guess demographic are being born at a di at a faster rate mm -hmm. than people of a, of a certain demographic are dying out that's what okay. replacement rate is but i don't i don't care about the replacement thing that's not that's not but, my issue my issue is more so, about becoming a minority in in the country in our country the, the debate is literally the debate topic was literally white replacement so she's she's now just accidentally admitted that she has completely ceded the point that's my yeah, but that's not even going to happen in your lifetime and if you want to prevent the that, problems actually. that you think no we're not white people are Isn't not going to no, be a minority in our lifetime a minority like what in 2050 no what in america in in 30 years less than 30 years i don't think so and also who cares Who cares? White people are already a minority in the world, and they will always be a minority because being white is a construct. There is no such thing as a white person. There is barely even such a thing as an American or a Hungarian or a, 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 or, or, or a Czech or a Slovak or a Slav. There's no fucking, it's all fucking made up bullshit. It's all based on lines drawn by states. And it has nothing to do with your actual relations to other people. Okay. I have zero, almost, I have next to no ties to the country that my family originally came from. None. I've never been there. Don't speak the language. Never have been. Probably never will be there. Maybe I will. I kind of want to go visit all my, all my Slovak and Czech friends and and stuff like that maybe someday i'll go there just just to meet them not for any like family reason um but uh uh but uh that's what my family is is it has a has has a uh, my family's from slovakia uh and that's like where my main ancestry comes from i have no fucking connection to any of that i don't even barely have a connection to america i have a connection to uh my partners who are a mix of co from completely different countries yeah, I want to visit Prague. I do. Um, anyway, uh, it's it's really fuck this this whole viewpoint is just fucking stupid. The idea that like people actually have any bonds based on these like national, let alone racial histories, is is ch it's childish. You wouldn't even if you were put into a room with a bunch of people and told to work on things outside of accents, you probably could never even know where those people were from. 
if you couldn't place their accent, you would have no fucking clue where they were from. They could be from your neighborhood. It's so stupid. Anyway, let's continue. I don't think that math lines up perfectly. Yeah. Something, so there's a lot. Capo said, just dug up the stats. Currently, America is 62% white. Hispanic Americans are the second largest group at 16%. The Hispanic population could double and the white population could have, and we'd be tied for the largest group. And even that is not even remotely realistic in our lifetimes. Yeah, it's insane. Her advocacy is fantasy. It's conspiracy. It's made the fuck up. What's that thing? Hold on. Can we get the, 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 hold on. What's that fucking thing? Hold on. I know it's here. Uh, hold on. Here we go. It's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. No, not this time. Is totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. It never happened. This one was invented by a writer. Not there you go. This one was invented by a writer. We made it up. Total fiction. That is this entire debate. Literally just made up a new definition for gaslight. Just so fucking stupid. Not the so the birth rates of millennials in this country and um of zoomers well we zoomers aren't exactly birthing age yet but if the birth rates Some of are, millennials yes. continue are, uh with the same okay. track for zoomers for mm -hmm. generation z then yes you can make that argument but right now the I, at least when i've read about it the low millennial just broadly the low millennial birth rate has more to do with um economic issues and just I, I issues with finances. hold on one second i'm so sorry okay in the I meantime, be... I want to let you know, folks, we are absolutely thrilled in less than 10 days or so, Modern Day Debate's first ever in-person conference, Debate Con, is going to be huge. In fact, Xander himself is going to be there among... Xander, this is the moment. I hope Xander Hall is still listening right now. Xander, please, seriously reconsider going to that goddamn convention for the love of motherfucking god play description box so you can get in-person tickets for that event in dallas so. and the crowdfund yes, is I in like the description this. box as well that way you can watch all the debates live as some of the debates will be live to the public and some of them you have to be either a patreon supporter or throw into the crowdfund for so with that we'll jump back into open conversation Okay, I'm so sorry about that. I'm like ADD. So, All right. So, so, what do you mean? What do you mean when you say we're be, that white people are being run people. out of out of I, America? I'm saying that's one of those one of the arguments that you hear when we talk about these things is okay, we'll go move to one of those white countries, which there are not very many left, um, and every single one is kind of um, experiencing like mass migration that's happening into their countries, and there's no real place for white people to go anymore. There really isn't. Um, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean no place what? for white because people? Are white see, people trying I'm... to escape the brown people? <laughs> for people who might not want to become a minority, people who might not want to experience any kind of racial revenge that could possibly emerge, um, where do they go if that was to happen? Where are they supposed to go? The moon. That's Why where white people belong. Why don't we just not encourage Send racism and fight revenge. against it? <laughs> Well, yeah, let's not have racial revenge. I would like that. I would very much like that. I, I don't think we're heading in the direction of a race war right now. It just, it doesn't seem like that's the way that we're going. The only BLM race war is, 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 is like an example of this. Granted, people, like general support for it has gone down <laughs> since Biden got elected. Nah. But like BLM had massive amounts of You're support right, among both black, is, white, is, Hispanic, so on Americans. Like it seems like we're seeing a, a massive increase in, in <laughs> multiracial cooperation to fight for rights it doesn't seem like we're having this like like do you think like that one it's like that one image where it's like mlk's ghost in the sky and the two white guys picking cotton and the black guy with the belt whipping them while they're picking the cotton like oh, i i just don't think that's the future we're heading towards i 
Okay, you haven't caught, like, obviously, like, I've gone down these rabbit holes since this whole red pill. I don't think you probably have. I've seen a lot of some scary freaking shit. Some of it where you'll see um, groups scary. of black Ooh. people, uh, like, scattered out, telling them to go get every white person you see. I've seen a lot of this anti-white stuff where they are just, like, literally beating people up for being white. Um, this stuff is kind of scary. Again, we are still in the majority, and this is happening. Like, the what the of fuck what? is going to happen when we are the minority? The, ma the majority Tell of Tell me why? something to ease my fears, and I would the love to not have these fucking fears. Like, I would absolutely love it. So please, please tell me if something. If white people are meant to be a minority by 2050, mm -hmm. I hope, I for one, let, let's say that does happen. Okay. What Holy line of events do you I was think born in it. has to born occur in the bunny hole. for us to reach the Down point the bunny that you're hole. afraid of? Let's, let's work it's through that first. It's already happening, Xana. It's already it's happening. It's not already happening. Yes, it is. It's not. You're being sheltered from it because it is happening. I'm not sheltered from it at all. I think my, it's listen, complete opposite Brittany, is happening. You, you do know yeah. that my most popular video on my entire channel is about how I was alt-right once. You know I know all these talking points. I've seen all the data. I've, I've heard yes. all the arguments from the alt-right when it comes to like the danger of white people being replaced and becoming a minority. I've heard all of these arguments. I'm very, very aware of the reasoning. It just doesn't hold up to scrutiny. It's just not a realistic outcome that's going to happen. If you want to prevent this future, uh, engaging in tribalism is only yeah. going to make the problem worse. This, what you're advocating this, this, this for is the very same racial uh, uh, racial separation that will only cause the problem to get worse. Like you said, humans are naturally fear afraid of reality of her own makeup. See, there's a couple of things. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this in a minute. Um, we're going to do an overall take at the end of this. Um, but, uh, whew. Yeah, let's let's go into this. Come on, let's keep going. The unknown. Mm -hmm. We need to make people of other races not the unknown. We don't want then, white people to be the unknown for black people or, or Hispanic people or whatever. And we don't want it to be the other way around either. Yeah, that's right? only if you that future that you want mm -hmm. is more likely with the p policy that you're advocating for. See, that would be all fine and dandy. And this is again what I talk about when lefties talk about this ideal world we wish we lived in that just doesn't actually exist. But the fact we are constantly teaching so much of this anti-white stuff and all the bad things that white people, I'm still talking, I know you're about He's right. There hasn't been an, a single meaningful example. Her example of white people being treated badly in the mainstream is one CNN guy saying one iffy statement and two other CNN guys saying completely uncontroversial statements. Brittany lives in a world of paranoid delusion, like most cons most conservatives, honestly. Have to do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Um, um, all the bad things that white people have done, it, what do you think is going to do? It's literally going to cause people to hate. I mean, white people hate white people. That's how much this propaganda is. What are you fucking talking working. about? I was one of those white people that hated white people. So what the fuck? <laughs> I love white people. Um, <laughs> I, I... Literally the only response to that is to just be like, well, I don't hate white people, so... Yeah, literal, literal white guilt, Andy. You can tell she's fucking making it up. This, I don't think this bitch has ever hated white people. I think this bitch has always loved white people a little too much, if you know what I'm saying. You know, she might have a little bit of a thing for the whiteies. I don't. I saw it. No, excuse me. I saw your Omegle. I have. Um... That guy was a Nazi. who was screaming the N word. I was screaming. I was screaming over him yelling the N word. Okay. Um, True. No, but I guess. You're, you're doing the thing. Like, do you think that minorities want to take revenge on white people? I do. I think, yeah, I do. I think that is something, I'm not every single one, obviously, but I do think there is this um, anti-white hatred that's going on. on and i worry about what happens when um white people do not have the kind of um power that they are able to hold on to right now <laughs> to uh stop it because they are not doing a great job even with them boom, being the majority boom, 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 so boom. obama was black and he was president was he? why didn't no. why <laughs> it's news to me hmm. cringe God. So, <laughs> we, we, we had a black president. What? Oh, have you noticed that over the last, like, three or four minutes, she started smuckling? 
So I've talked about this in the past, how the smuckle, the smuckle is a typical Nazi tactic. It is mostly Nazis that do the smuckle. Um, other people do smuckle, but the smuckle is a core Nazi tactic. Once they realize how bad they've been owned, and it always comes late, they never realize that they're being owned until it's too late. But once they realize it, you can see, almost see the fear in their eyes, and then they start to do the smuckle. The smuckle's where they go, <laughs> yeah, you would think that, wouldn't you, liberal? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do it looks like that it looks just like what britney just did yeah smuckle reminds me of being smug that's what it means it's the smug chuckle that's what smuckle means it's the smug chuckle there you go and it is a it is a it is an ancient nazi tactic okay they've been doing it since fucking world war ii okay the smuckle why didn't yeah. we see any of that from from him you know <laughs> Why, like you would think that if okay, there was a black, if on. we had a black president elected, like I mean, we saw hate crimes from white nationalists and white supremacists mm -hmm. go up under sure. Trump. You'd think under Obama, you would see like anti-white hate crimes and 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 like black but separatist and or sorry, not black separatist, but like anti-white uh, hate well, crimes. You thought you would think they'd go up. Hell, even Biden being in office, you'd mm -hmm. think you'd be seeing left-wing anti-white hate crimes go up, right? You know that Obama was like the first social media president, right? What? <laughs> Zan's face here, just like, huh? <laughs> I mean, I you might <laughs> his joy gone. <laughs> just like, huh? What does that even mean? I'd be too young to know that. So. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Twitter was like, when did Twitter come out? Like, like 2006. Well, 2008 is like kind of the when. Uh, well, what does this mean? Wait, what's the point? What's the point of social media? What does that mean? What does that? What does being the first social media president even mean in this context? What does this mean? in general i mean yeah there was stuff here and there but it was like my space you know way before your time though chat okay but <laughs> what's this have to what's this have to do with i'm saying that do you think don't you think did she just like do a voice there did she just do a character there can we listen to that again when did twitter come it's out like, like 2006 well, 2008 is like kind of the when uh social media started to skyrocket in general i mean yeah there was stuff here and there but it was like my space you know way before your time though chat okay but <laughs> Way behind, way before your time there, chat. What was that? What does that mean? Is she trying to... Was that like... Uh... <sighs> Let's just let that one go. What's this, have to, what's this have to do with... I'm saying that, do you think, don't you think that social media also plays a huge role in some of the stuff that we are dealing with in some of the, um, you know, so, social president. media makes it easier for a president to radicalize their base. That's how Trump stoked yeah, his, we know his fans into doing the Capitol riot with social media. Thank you very, very much. Zale song, Sh jail song. Thank you very much. Yo, Brittany and all of them would love Antarctica. It's all white and snowy. Lots of open space. Frigid and barren. The females are used to that. Oh, oh, that's a burn and true. But I don't know if they'd get along with the penguins. That's the problem. That that only helps my argument. The idea that Donald Trump, or sorry, that Obama or Biden could reach their left wing anti white. Do you think Obama <laughs> used social media to be Trump did? Come on. I mean, he could have, but he, he didn't. didn't. It doesn't see, because we don't because the left doesn't want to start a race war. Is why Obama didn't want to start a race war. Obama was somebody who literally he wanted to. He was one of those. I think I even saw an interview where he was saying I wasn't. You know, he was worried about not being black enough for black people, not being white enough for white people, and he was in that like center where he um, was trying to please both sides and walk that walk that line. In a way, in this country, I feel like that is like the best line you can actually walk because. Um, I, I, I'm a big Obama fan. Sorry to people that um, <laughs> that's probably going to piss a lot of people on both sides off, but I'm yeah, a big Obama totally. fan. Oh, yeah, um, totally. I think he was a really I good president. I bet you're a huge, oh, big fan of Obama. Big, big Obama fan. First, fan. first one of Hussein Obama. Hussein Obama was my favorite. I loved him. Oh, I mean, Barack. I mean, Barack Obama. Barack Obama was my favorite. He did a really good job, but he was the first social media president, and that um, there were a lot of problems that arise because of social media that we don't ever think about because, uh, 
you know, somebody like you who literally grew up in the social media age, what that was your world. But for a lot of other people, we had to adjust to this entirely new world where information was coming at you so much faster. Yeah, hate groups are rising. People were able to like get into conspiracies a lot easier. There were um, people who were going with like-minded uh, views and uh, you're getting information before you can actually have any facts. And um, there was a reactionary kind of environment going on. And I think Obama took a lot of heat for some of the things that were actually caused by social media. But I don't think that, um, but I think that like for, for our country in general, and if you look at the way our social media is going now, we're not even able to, like right wingers are literally purged off of every freaking platform you can have. Like every single one, they're, they're not allowed to have a space online anymore. Didn't yes, Twitter Val Sally is amazing. They specifically have to be more lenient when uh, enforcing the rules of their TOS on conservatives because if they weren't, then there'd when be virtually no. Uh, it was a few years or two years ago, I think, maybe a year ago. They came out and they said they had to be more easy on conservative politicians and public figures when it came to um, like upholding their TOS because if they enacted their TOS as they would anybody else, basically every conservative politician would be banned on yep. off of Twitter, so they have to like- This is a concept that I have mentioned on here many times. It's called, it's called conservative affirmative action. Conservatives have to be treated specially in America specifically, because the things that they say on a daily basis are considered uncivil by basically everyone else. They say racist shit. They say slurs all the time. They basically shit up every space that they're in. And so companies, because there's so many conservatives in America, have to go, oh my God, okay, we actually have to make our TOS um, not as good because otherwise we'll lose all the money of these fucking conservatives. Even though it makes their website worse, the users, the, the majority of users are irritated by their presence and the fact that the TOSs are so poorly in, uh, enforced. Yeah, it's called conservative aff affirmative action, okay? Seriously. Yep, S exactly. Lonnie, I invented it originally, that term, I made up that term originally to talk about why Twitch panels have like 3,000 follower, 500 view, or 3,000 viewer, 500 viewer, uh, 250 viewer lefties on there with a two viewer Andy right winger. And it's because... Most conservatives literally can't stop themselves from saying raw racist bullshit all the time. Anyway, let's continue. Let's let's fucking continue. Let's keep going. Kind of play it easy there. They've admitted they had to do that. Should, they gave Trump so many cases, so many chances. You should meet the new CEO. I literally got banned off of Twitter for following somebody like on the right. Doubt. Dun 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 dun. Fucking doubt. Doubt. That I, I'm not even kidding. That I didn't break any TOS. Somebody I was following had a uh, Twitter space, and everybody that was in that Twitter space got banned, suspended completely. No warning, no nothing, just banned. Um, what was the Twitter space about? It was. Hmm. Well, Story changed real quick. There went from following someone. Here we go. Get ready for the reveal. All right. Okay, everybody, we're gonna t we're gonna do a little exercise here. Okay, hold on, watch. I got a I got a thing here. Here you go. Here you go. Was it following someone? Two, saying a racial slur. Or three, participating in a Twitter space that was organized by ban evading Nazis. Hmm, I wonder which one it actually was. Shall we find out? Everybody get your votes in. You got 10 more seconds to get your votes in. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go on. All right, two, one. Okay, it looks like people figured it out. Well, it was a um, it was a Fuentes Twitter space that he had. <laughs> but no, what is? The, who cares? Like, why should the people that are just listening in a Twitter space or following somebody get banned? You weren't just listening in a Twitter space. You were participating in a Twitter space that was organized by multiple Nazis who have been multiplicity, multiple, multi. Wow, I'm really dying right here. This word is killing me. 
Nazis who had been banned multiple times. That's what it was. That that's that's what it was. It was that. And what in what world is that okay? Um, I mean, I, I Twitter makes the rules, I guess. Don't get me wrong; these platforms practically are not very. Vush's cognitive decline arc is spreading. No, it's just because we're all really tired. That's the secret. That's the secret reason why, if all of your if all of your streamers. Your favorite streamers seem like they're experiencing cognitive decline. It's not cognitive decline. It's we're fucking tired and fuck you, it's January! Fuck you, it's January! Very good at upholding their TOS, and you've probably seen me complain about that plenty on Twitter, but I mean, I, I, I don't... Nick Fuentes is a, is a public figure who's a neo-Nazi and is banned off of Twitter. It's not exactly surprising that people hanging out in like a fan club group... Do you disagree with that? Do you think Nick Fuentes isn't a Nazi? No, I don't think he's a Nazi. I don't think he's a Nazi. Hint. Nick Fuentes is indeed a Nazi. The most obvious Nazi you can possibly imagine. Just so much of a Nazi. He is the most obvious Nazi you could ever imagine. All he does is make fucking Holocaust jokes. You can tune in to any Nick Fuentes content, and you will come across so much Nazi rhetoric, so much explicitly Nazi rhetoric, that it would make your head fucking spin. Um, I think he has maybe some controversial views, but I don't think he's a Nazi, and I think, like, we throw that That's term the third around sus. loosely. Um, but I don't even think, like, Nazis are even actually a real thing anymore, so... <laughs> mm. But, mm. yeah, no, I, I just think that mm. the way we're not even able to live in the same internet spaces where you're not even going to have any kind of like human contact with somebody you're not going to be able i mean it would be literally the safest place to be somewhere and we can't even be in these same internet spaces so yeah we're supposed to be able to be in the same country i don't know what percentage of the left do you think is anti-white uh i i don't know xander i don't know but i'm sure there's quite a bit <laughs> I think okay. it's not, I don't know if they even recognize that they are anti-white. I think that they have a, like this anti-white guilt. I literally had it myself and I took, a, I went through like the worst cognitive dissonance going through this whole red pill process. Oh, so totally. I know. Do you remember how quick her red pill p phase was? Her red pill phase was got, uh, got exposed for having an, a, a, let me just, let's just write out the timeline. Okay. Let's think out the timeline here. Set up political show, pretended to be a left wing host platformed tons and tons of Nazis. The chat was full of Nazis. The Discord was literally full of Nazis to the point that it got shut down by Discord twice. Then she invited a new Nazi host to her show and an admin to her server who red-pilled her like that. Very weird. Hmm little odd that i'm sure it was very difficult after you built up a community of nazis to suddenly begin talking about being a red pill red pillar hmm weird what it feels like where show i is still up yes w was going through this and i felt like some of the thoughts i was having were um fucking with me a bit and i didn't want to have those thoughts because i know that this is where my black pill came in, too, because there was a lot of problems I was recognizing that there were no solutions to, and that freaked me out. What if I have white guilt, but I'm not white? That's kink. That as well. And, um, yeah, so I've been a little bit more red of course to black you can, pill because than you anything. Can. You can do whatever you want. But I think that the fact the propaganda is so strong that so many white people are so anti-white is not a good sign. <laughs> Okay, I, I, let's take let's respond to this real quick. I I want to let I want to continue with this debate because we still have quite a bit to go through. Um, oh, mixed dizzy. So we're saying she was probably crypto the entire time and hiding her power level. That good question, mixed dizzy. We're gonna talk about exactly that question. That is something. Ah, yes, the crypto question. That's what we're going to discuss shortly. In fact, because I want to talk about that. But what I wanted to talk about right here, what I wanted to talk about right here was the idea of white guilt. Um, guys, white guilt is fucking stupid, okay? If you look at what white people did under the name of whiteness in America and you go, holy shit, that's disgusting. Holy fucking shit. Um, 
you should not feel white guilt. You should instead reject whiteness because whiteness being white is the structure that is allowed for this shit to happen. White guilt is fucking stupid. It is just as stupid as whiteness itself. It is a ridiculous, ridiculous construct. Okay. Don't be white. Don't be white. You can, yeah, actually believe it or not. It's a choice to be white. Did you know that? It's a fucking choice. You can have, you can be a light skinned person. You can be a person who happens to have white colored skin, but whiteness and white people is fake. And if you feel white guilt, that too is fake. White guilt upholds problematic, uh, a seriously problematic view of gender, uh, not gender of race. Oh my God. I talk about gender too much of, of race. It upholds a concept of race that says that white people exist and are responsible for everything that happens in the world. Okay? Seriously. It is just, yeah, Re reject whiteness. You don't have to be a white person. You notice how they, how pe you never, you were never asked if you identified as white. No one ever asks you if, uh, if, um, if you, if you consider yourself white or if you feel an attachment to whiteness, you just get called it or don't. Do you know how many people have whitish skin who aren't considered white? I know there's a couple, I know there's a couple of people who are probably in this audience who are white passing Jewish people. Do we have any white passing Jews in the audience? You don't have to like speak up or, or show yourself or anything like that, but I know we probably do. And, and I bet you white passing Jewish people, you probably know what it's like to have your whiteness disappear like that. Where you're told you're white when it's convenient, and then the moment you say anything that doesn't agree with the white people, all of a sudden, you're not white anymore. You're Jewish. Even though your skin color didn't change, your eye color doesn't change, uh, your history doesn't change. You just automatically, you can have your whiteness sucked away from you because you have the wrong political opinions. Because whiteness is a political construct. Bam! That's why that can happen. And you know why Nazis call people race traitors? For the same reason. Because it isn't actually about race. It isn't actually about gen genetics. It isn't about nation. It's about supremacy. It's about an ar building an arbitrary, oppressive construct of supremacy that's easy to stoke fear on. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Let's continue. I I hate to say it, but I think you've you've red pilled yourself into supporting anti whiteness. Wait, what? True, I, Zan, I, I, true. I, I, I know it, it sounds strange, Let's but like the, the groups you've said that you agree with here are are explicitly like for example the Hotep say group of people that uh, you know said are just are. looking out you, you said they were the black separatists black nationalists etc no, they're right. they're part of that that umbrella um, those are the groups that I see who at least claim to be on the left that are that put out the most virulent anti-white like uh, anti-white racism right. and anti-white hatred and and uh, Holy they're shit, allying with the Jew. types really like America that. First, Nick Fuentes, Fucked. the Proud Boys, all of that. And they're very anti-white. The only reason these groups are, are coming together is because they both want segregation. And your virtue signaling support for this type of initiative, and it's ironic because these are the types of people where I'm seeing all the, like, every bit of anti-white rhetoric I see from the left mm -hmm. are people enabling and supporting these, like, black separatists, black nationalists, or, or uh, hotep types, and you're signaling support for those people who are, who are the types I've heard the most anti-white racism from on the left. But I, I So let me talk about something real quick, okay? Let me talk about a personal experience. You ready for a little bit of anecdote Andrea here? Okay. Um, so some of you may know my dad was a crypto Nazi. Okay. Um, hi, my dad was a crypto Nazi. Um, and it's funny because, uh, throughout the course of my life, there was this weird dissonance where, uh, my dad would often d use rhetoric just like this, where he would talk about the accomplishments of the West, of white people, of this, that, and the other thing. Um, you know, <laughs> good time to come in, Yeah, right? I came in at a weird time. Hey, oh, you look wonderful. Thank you. 
You look really wonderful. That's a great outfit. <laughs> what a wonderful outfit. Um, bye, Doe. Be safe out there. We will. Okay. Um, Doe got the drip. Yeah, they're all heading out. I think they're going to go grab some food and stuff. Mwah. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, uh, let's let's go back. Yeah, my dad was like a Christian nationalist type. Now, he would drop all this sort of rhetoric, but there's something weird about it, which is that I also knew where my family supposedly came from, and I also knew the history, the immigration history of my family. So, my family were chicken farmers in Slovakia. Literal peasants. Literal peasants. And in the 1900s, my great-grandfather got, through some chance of fate, came here to do work. He came to America to do work in, like, 1930 or something, okay? Like, super, super early on, okay? And my grandfather went and fought in World War II. And my dad... Is, you know, the child of my grandfather, obviously, who my grandfather came here as a ba as a baby. And my great grandfather came here in the 1900s. So whenever I would hear my dad talking about America this and white people that, I go, Dad, our family history, we were fucking peasants. We were fucking peasants. Like, the Nazis, they, they tried to kill everybody. They tried to kill all of us. So, there was this weird dissonance in my mind about what whiteness even meant. Because I was told, like, these weird Nazi arguments about, like, oh, yes, the greatness of the race and did 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 blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wait, we were Slavs. We were Slavic people who were poor as fuck and fled and fought on the side of America. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't have any attachment. I'm like, I'm like a, a, a weird like mongrel from, from Eastern Europe who somehow, whose family somehow scooted across in like a time of relative peace before a time of war. We were not some great people. We were peasants. We were chicken farmers. So I've never been able to get into that. Like, ever. The one thing I was never, like, in my family, one of the areas that never made sense to me, one of the places that indoctrination failed was on the racial stuff. I could never agree with my dad on races, on racial bullshit, on his racism. Because, well, first of all, my first best friend, the best friend I had when I was in preschool, was a black girl. I literally didn't understand race until I was older because my first friend, my first closest friend I ever had was a different race than me. And I never knew that race meant every, anything at all. I didn't even know there was a difference between us. I literally didn't. So, like, oh, where is she now? Uh, last I checked, she was going to an Ivy League. She's, she is lesbian, had a really cute girlfriend, and was going to an Ivy League school. Like, unironically. Last I checked. It's been many years since I last checked in on her. But she seems to be doing good for herself. Which makes me very happy, because she was awesome. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, the whole point is, is that the racial stuff never stuck, because it literally didn't make sense to me. When my dad told me our family history, and then he tried to, like, sell me on these weird political narratives about Western civilization and all this shit, I'm like, Dad, we weren't a part of Western civilization. We were the fucking serfs getting crushed underneath. We didn't invent anything. We farmed chickens. So, and like me, I don't have any connection to y'all. I never even met my grandpa. Ever. I never met my grandpa. He died before I was born. So what the fuck am I supposed to say? Like, what do you, how am I going to buy into this idea of something I have no connection to? That's the absurdity that's in all of these stupid statements is that for 90% of the people who buy into this rhetoric, it doesn't even fucking apply. It doesn't even fucking apply to them. You don't even like all these Nazis are like, oh yeah, the white race, you know, the conqueror gene, oh, blah, 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 whatever stupid bullshit they have. And then it turns out that they're like from like 
some random village in, in Eastern Europe that got plowed over by the Nazis in 1950 and doesn't exist anymore. Oh, I love you. Oh, you look so good. Thank you look you. so, look, show off. Oh. Say hi, look at Fawn. Fawn looks so good. Be safe out there. I got, I got my creepers. creepers. Ooh, the creepers, I love those things. You look so good. Thank you. Make sure you keep your masks on. Of course. Love you. I always do. I'm I know you do. Of that crap. Mwah. So let's get back to this uh, debate. There's not much else for me to say here, but that whiteness is bullshit, okay? Yeah, I know. Mama and I, I almost left. would rather I... them be <clears throat> honest about it, if anything, and, you know, like, no, okay. I literally do it all the they time. They don't, not me. Sorry, excuse me. But <laughs> they don't want to live amongst white people. And uh -oh. for white people, they shouldn't uh -oh. have to live amongst people that they don't like either. If I feel like that choice should be mm. allowed in this country, mm. and it doesn't seem like it is. It's We are... Had this, like, like that right there is be is is not even sussy anymore. She just said, I don't want to live with people I don't like, referring to black people. Like, she slipped that through by being vague, but that's what was said, right? That's what she just said. She said, I think that people shouldn't have to live with people they don't like, which in this context is black people. That's not sus. That's just open ethno-nationalism. ...that's happening. <clears throat> and um, why... Yikes. What Again, if we're having all of this propaganda that's being pushed, what results do you think that's going to uh, cause? If still hasn't case, substantiated this so-called shit around people that they don't like or that they have been like trained to not like, and telling them, okay, now you have to be in a company with them, you have to be in a school with them, you have to be in this uh, community with them, and um, what? deal with it. What do you think that's going to do? We gotta see the. We gotta see if like anti-white hate crimes go up. I guess it seems like the country is just getting more and more um, progressive yeah. as it gets because more you're and being more diverse. Sheltered. How am I? I'm, I'm not sheltered. I live in. By the way, this is such a weak spot. Brittany calling Zan sheltered. Brittany calling Zan sheltered comes off so stupid. First of all, she doesn't know anything about Zan. Secondly, it just comes across as massive cope. I don't think anybody sees this as a win. Palm Springs. It's like for like it's like a, a an hour drive from the, the border to Mexico. You know, like you you'd, you'd think that there'd be you like I I've I've gone to L A and shit. I've seen a good amount of stuff. Like I I don't know oh, why the shit. I thought of another cool anecdote. Want to know what's weird? So my dad was a crypto Nazi. My mom was not. My mom was conservative in her own ways, but my mom was not fixated on race at all. At all. <clears throat> and you want to know what the big difference was? My dad grew up all around white racist people, and my mom grew up in one of the most racially diverse cities in the country. Weird how that works out. Weird how one parent who spends lots of time around people of different backgrounds and races, even though she married a crypto Nazi, never swallowed that bullshit. Weird, isn't it? So strange. So weird how that works. Altered thing is an argument from you. I'm, I've used data to back up what I've said. The, the data from sociologists, criminology, everything seems to demonstrate that exposure reduces the amount of racial animosity and racism in someone that somebody has, right? And you're using, well, I, I have common sense. You're sheltered. That's my argument. I think. Do you understand where the disconnect well, is? Well, I think that it. What I mean by being sheltered is a That's lot fair, of people Aurora. in these communities Aurora are. Waxing. I, I would say That's terminally fair. online. I'm probably one of those as well. But you, when you have, like I said earlier, that all these right wingers are being pushed off of the internet completely, it's a lot easier for left wingers to get their messages out than it is for right wingers. Like, no, it isn't. Left wingers can kind of push whatever freaking message they want. Incoming massive they fail. Want, whenever they want. On wherever Britney's they part. Want. Right wingers are not able to do that. They are kicked off of everything. So they are not able to counter any of this stuff. They can't even talk about half of these true. things because I just it's against got striked. TOS. I got false striked by YouTube twice in a row because I talked about Oops. vaccines. Yeah, I trap card activated yet again. Another trap card activated. One of those two. Anyone, anyone who talks about COVID or anything yeah. that's a controversial topic at all might get the strike on it's YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Because it's an al it's an algorithm, and all these platforms care about is maximizing their revenue. And small creators that have no accountability talking about these topics 
is a threat for YouTube's bottom line. They aren't pushing an ideology. YouTube doesn't want to push an anti-white. Uh, you'd think YouTube would be banning every conservative. Lovely heretic says, you keep talking about my dad in the past tense. I'm so sorry if this is overstepping, but has your dad passed away? No, not that I know of. Um, he did get COVID though. So I don't know if he's okay. I I'm sure he's probably fine. Um, he has good health insurance. My dad and I just don't talk. We haven't talked in like m more than half a decade. Um, it, for obvious reasons, I don't associate, I think he's like a, a very bad person. So yeah, but he did get, he did get COVID. I, at last I checked, he was fine, but yeah, he's like an anti-masker and all that shit. So anyway right-wing creator on their platform and twitch would be doing the same if that was their goal absolutely not for the pushing best. for some anti-white anti-american anti well that's great whatever, to hear mental narrative okay? i do like, think there are some people i do think that there are times in life where you can mend relationships i don't anticipate it being something that will happen with my dad because of the way that my dad is about things my dad is incredibly 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 uh stubborn in his views he does not yield to anyone Ever. He's very unyielding, like to uh, to a, an, a to a pathological degree. Um, he's incapable of admitting wrongness. So I don't imagine that it will happen, but maybe. And if it does, maybe. Who knows? But I'm very happy to hear that your dad um, and you have been able to, um, you know, to be able to cross that. I don't even know what that would sound like, Kiesel. That would be funny though, but it would never happen. I don't think he would never do that sort of thing. Do you, I'm I'm actually curious. This is a question that I have. What about whiteness? Is it a question you have or your chat has? I have it. Okay. What about whiteness to you is worth preserving? Why do you want to preserve okay. whiteness? This is, see, this is not like my question because I don't really, yeah, it's, exactly. it's not about it for me. Like, exactly, I'm not Kepo. somebody who is like, oh, I'm trying to like save the white race or anything like that. I really, I honestly do not care. It's That's not what this is for me. Like I have very different goals than a lot of the white nationalists have. So they might, that might be their goal. For yeah, me, I just do not want to become a minority in this country. I do worry about a racial revenge. I don't like the anti-white hate. Um, I think that for me, being white is more of a visual thing. Like if somebody was going what? after somebody, I'm still talking. If somebody was going after somebody for being white, they're not going to sit there and um, ask them like, you know, they're 23 and me or how white are you or this or that. They are going to see somebody who is, you know, blonde, blue eyed, and they are going to be not happy if they are anti-white so that's my my issue i don't again white nationalists have a very different reasoning might have similar goals but different completely different reasoning for it and again i don't have any hate for anybody i re listen i have a different reason for advocating genocide you are advocating genocide because you want a white ethno state i'm advocating genocide because i want a white ethno state it's very different you see very very different you see really 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 wish it wasn't like this i hate that it's like this but there are so many uncomfortable truths that i have had to like face that i didn't like it but they are the reality and it sucks that it's the reality but it is the reality and it, it, it what really annoys me is the fact that you can't talk about this because then you are like lambasted this is horrible horrible person just by pointing out uncomfortable truths why why is that okay that is just jq just so you know, the I'm just asking questions. These are just the uncomfortable truths. That is straight up Nazi rhetoric, straight up out of the playbook of every Nazi ever. Every single Nazi will talk about uncomfortable truths and just asking questions about who's actually in charge and all that shit. Isn't it weird how that works, huh? I don't think you're calling out the, when you say things like "I'm just pointing out uncomfortable truths," that comes off as a dog whistle. That's yeah, something that, like, good right job, Zan. Good job, Zan. Have used as a as a defense okay. against any criticism is I'm just asking questions. I'm just telling the 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 brutal, honest truth. I'm just telling it how it is. The mm -hmm. uncomfortable truth, like it, it just it it just comes off as a little sussy to me. But <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> I'm sorry. My my chat said something funny. Um, Stop looking at your chat. See, I don't have a chat that I'm again uh, be able to look at, so you can't look at your. They're picture. just spamming emotes and jokes. Okay, they're not backing me up or anything. Oh, they spy, never back me up. I got spy in there, seeing if you're gonna be stealing they're, notes. They're, they're... <laughs> That's turbo cringe. 
spam they're just spamming the emo of uh hank schrader from breaking bad doing the sus face that's what they're doing right now um, <laughs> i guess do, so you believe that there is an overwhelming or at least a growing animosity towards white people in our society you believe that immigration is going to result in more non-white people coming to this country, learning, I guess, how bad white people are, and then they're going to want to do a race war. I think with how much we are talking and how much we are pushing so much of the anti-white hatred, that yes, that when the time comes, white people are the minority. And with how much, I mean, we are, I get, like, we are trying to right a lot of the wrongs that happened in the past. And, like... It seems like almost like white people are going to be having to get punished for the sins of the past. They are getting like they really are being punished for the sins of the past. Whereas black people, they might be able to get away with a little bit more. Like you, um, they're filming something. They might do something legal, but if they do something, they provoke a cop, and something happens, then uh, they're able to get out of it because it's all about public opinion, and they're pushing a lot of this stuff. And um, I think MLK was somebody who was also talking about that, how they would kind of try to provoke incidents that would happen. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm sorry. Xander Hall's face right here. Don't you dare. Hold on. Let's just get that face. Can we get that exact frame perfect? Can we get that? Hold on. Let's about see. That, how they would kind of try to provoke incidents. <laughs> Pain! The pain here! Oh! She just. She's accusing MLK of being an outside agitator. Oh! It's beautiful. Just. Oh, just running down the Nazi checklist. That would happen. Don't you dare. <laughs> would provoke things to, to show people how bad some of the police were and to get a reaction from the public. It's all about public opinion. And um, with social media, it makes it a lot easier for them to do. But I think for white people, there's no sympathy for any white person for anything. They get no wiggle room for anything. One little screw up and like the mob is coming for them. And um, I don't know. I think that's just, uh, it's just kind of little things like that that keep building up and happening. Um, should worry you. Do you ever plan on having kids? Probably not. I think I'll probably adopt a kid a when, I'm, uh, well, when, I, when I'm at a. <laughs> up and happening um should worry you do you ever plan on having kids probably not i think i'll probably adopt a kid a when baby. i'm a, a, well devious chillster with the five dollars thank you very much let's take a look at this meme let's take a moment to catch that you want an ethno state because you're afraid of the great replacement. I want one because I'm afraid of being replaced. We are not the same. True, devious chillster. True. Literally. Literally true. Excellent meme. And yeah, she said, are you going to adopt a black baby? Which is a weird thing to say. I don't really know what's implied there. What's supposed to be set? What's being implied there? Does anybody understand, like, what's being... There's not actually anything explicit being implied there. That is what we call a dog whistle. It doesn't mean anything to anybody else, but if you're in the know, what she's saying is that Xander Hall is a cuck and is going to adopt a black baby. See? See? That's, what's the, that's what the whistle is supposed to say. When, I, when I'm at a certain <laughs> point where I've got, like, the financial means and everything, yeah. I'll probably adopt a kid that already needs a home. I think that, like... There's a lot of kids out there in the foster system who are ending up in really shitty situations. A really close friend of mine was in one of those situations, and she was sexually assaulted by one of her foster parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just hope I that agree. if I by the way, one day, if I'm going My family, for all of our problems, the best thing my family ever did, we adopted two of my siblings. Two of my siblings were adopted. And when I was young, it was one of the most fulfilling things that my family ever did. It was awesome. Adoption is amazing, and it is the one part of my family, all of the hard things I had with my family, us adopting two of my siblings was easily the, one of the best things ever. Adoption is so good.
It is so, it can be so good. And yes, there are problems in the foster system and there are problems in the adoption system, of course. But that doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that there are a lot of kids out there who literally, a lot of orphans or functional orphans who literally don't have homes and could use them. Adoption is based and Xan is based for offering to it, for, for thinking about adoption, seriously. Going to have kids, I can just provide a good home and upbringing and a financial stable living situation for a child who already needs a place to be, you know? You know what I hope? Here's what I hope. Here's a little wholesome moment. I hope that I'm still making my show when Zan becomes a dad. Because that would be the sickest thing to see ever. I hope I'm still making my show. And I hope Zan is still making his show and is happy making his show when Zan becomes a dad. Because that would be so fucking sick. I can be the cool aunt, can't I? I could be a cool aunt, right? That'd be sick as fuck. That'd be so fucking sick. Zan would be a good dad. Zan would be a good fucking dad. I can tell. Zan would have fun. Zan would spend so much fucking time playing games and stuff with his kids. Zan is going to be a favorite dad. I can tell. Yeah. I guess that's my goal, but 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 I I have a question. I got an answer. When you say white people will be a minority in this country, what do you mean by that? What does the, what does minority mean? Okay, I know that if you were to, they're technically they'd still not exactly, be a minority Cherry. because you have a lot of different other groups. But I feel like with how much people all have a grievance against white people, that there is like. It wouldn't matter if, uh, yeah, okay, you have a certain amount of Mexicans or black people or this or that. It's like they all have a grievance against white people. Everybody is like, everybody hates whitey. <laughs> and so wow, I okay. think that She's... that is when wow, white okay. people are going to be the minority. When you combine the rest of them. Wow, okay. So when we use minority to refer to like black people or Hispanic people or any non-white mm -hmm. like racial group or ethnic sure. group in this country, we're not the word minority isn't referring to them being yeah, like the, to, the number being no, low. No, I get, it's I get what a, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So you're arguing that white people will become a minority in the same sense that non-white people in this country are, not out of number but in power and and uh, wealth. It's a little and bit whatnot. of both. It's a little bit of both, but yeah, like I think that um, it's just not it's just not going to be good for white people in general. Like, wait, wait, wait. Mm. so you think? Okay. The av like your do you think your life is going to be affected by this? I'm curious. Do I think happens. my life is going to be affected by this? Yeah. Mine personally, I don't know if mine personally is. Um, I worry about my sons. I worry about um, I worry about yeah. I worry about my son's life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I think your son will probably be okay. Why? Um, I, yes. I don't I don't Devious think. Devious Chilster, you've brought up a great point. And I was going to talk about this because it is blatantly obvious. But her argument vo boils down to, what do you mean white people will become a minority? I think white people will be treated like we treat black people and we just don't want that. That is what's being said. It's being said in so many words. But yes, that is what's being said. It's being said, I can't imagine a world. It would be horrible if we lived in a world where people treated us like we treat them. And so, uh... Let's keep the world the way it is so that I'm on top and you're not. Of course she said that before. Of course. We're going to talk about that more. Let's keep going. The race war is coming. I'm going to be honest. If anything, if there's going to be any type of race war or massive violent uh, racially motivated outbreak, it's way more likely going to be like white right wingers going against like a multiracial protest of black, Hispanic and white peoples way more likely. Okay, I mean that so that that seems literally like it's way true. We just like the wait. That's literally true. Like she rolled her eyes at that. But I want you to remember, we have reviewed on this channel, all of you, my lovely viewers, we have reviewed multiple videos by right wing channels, by popular right wing channels that literally say constantly, "A race war is coming. A race war is coming. You better be ready. A race war is coming." Even fucking Tim Pool does that shit even tim pool does that shit it is right wingers who are constantly agitating this shit constantly it is not fucking other races doing this it is white it is white nationalists it is nazis it is far-righters 
but following the Capitol riot, Christchurch shooting. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can even look at the terrorism rate, the the politically motivated rates for uh, terror, mm -hmm. uh, it just across the world and in this country. It's overwhelmingly right wing. Um, I got, virtually I no. Hold on a second. Sure. I think actually I might bring this up uh, for when she gets back. Um, it just might it. be worth referencing. We will keep um, that. Put a put a pin in it. I promise we'll come right back to it, Xander. I've got to let you know, folks. Xander is one of the people who will be at this conference coming up. It is going to be juicy, so and that nervous. is linked in the description. As that's oh, I'm so nervous about you going to Texas, Dan. I'm so fucking nervous. Buddy, uh, I'm so fucking nervous. I know, I'm being a naggy mom type here. I know, I'm being, de I'm being the mama part of Demon Mama. But like one out of every 13 new cases is in Texas. Please fucking be careful. Like, seriously, get the, get the Amogus outfit, please. Get the Amogus outfit. Dallas, Texas, January 15th and 16th. We'll jump back into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it just, it like every bit of data, I mean, I could DM you on Discord if you want to see some of it, but it, it looks like left-wing oh, yes. political. Zan, definitely, definitely wear an N95 under your other one, okay? Legacy of Boom 56 with the $5. Thank you very much for the very generous $5. You said that you don't have to ID as white, but you agree that you would still benefit from the construct of whiteness, right? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. White privilege still exists even if you don't identify with being white. And in fact, how you dismantle white privilege is by acknowledging that and by working to dismantle whiteness while rejecting being lumped into whiteness. I don't want people to look at me and think white person. I fucking hate that. I don't want anything to do with you motherfuckers. Any people who fucking identify with being white, I don't want anything to do with you. Don't fucking, don't fucking lump me in because of my skin color. Because you didn't in the past and you won't in the future. And I know that being trans automatically turns off my whiteness anyway. Not fully. Not from the li the little things for where people just do a quick eyeball check, but from everything else. Violence has right. been... It didn't really exist much on any serious scale to begin with in this country, but just it's it's gone down. The tiny bit that existed has gone down over the decades, um, while right-wing violence has been on an upward trend. Uh, it just doesn't seem like if we look at the current trends, the direction this country is heading in, it seems like those that are advocating for more progressive policy and more equality mm -hmm. are the same that are trying to fight against the concept of racism. I mean, you even listed when you talked about uh, critical race theory, the main idea behind it is that in reality, the conceptions we have of race are totally bunk. They were invented in order to help support racism. The idea that the people you're claiming are anti-white are pushing is to abolish the idea of race. There's not supposed to be a concept Welcome back, Lonnie. And black and Lonnie, Lonnie, make sure, make sure that Zan has a nice N95 mask that he can wear under his nice fashionable mask. I know the, the one mask, two mask, Dr. Fauci, but a N95 masks look like shit, but you can put another mask over it so you don't look like shit while not breathing in particles, Okay. One mask, two mask, Dr. Fauci. Hispanic, etc. <laughs> are, are, are you? Do you believe that the, these people are not in favor of racial abolition? Wait, are you saying? Wait, hold on a the, second. The idea purported by most of the types that support critical race theory, actual uh -huh. critical race theory, not I when wor I'll Republicans stop worrying claim now. that I love teaching about Martin Luther Very King much. is critical Don't race theory sick. in schools. Actual critical race theory. Most that purport it are racial abolitionists. They believe the social construct of race is one that only results in more racial animus between us, and they want to abolish it. You're saying that w white, no, you're not saying white people are doing that. Plenty of white people support. Like ele white lefties. Okay, um, but even, okay, say that you're, you're right about uh, white people are gonna be the ones that are gonna go do all these horrible things and blah, blah. It's still an argument against um, being a multiracial society because it's still an argument that what? there is a lot of tensions that are going to wait, happen. Wait, but, but wait, uh, mental Ben, white lefties aren't really white apparently. Let's listen back to that. I was just talking about this. Let's listen back to that real quick. Listen and watch how quickly the whiteness disappears, yeah. Race theory, most that purport it are racial abolitionists. 
They believe the social construct of race is one that only results in more racial animus between us, and they want to abolish it. You're saying that w white, no, you're not saying white people are doing that. Plenty of white people support. Like, le white lefties. Okay. Um, but white lefties. Okay, yeah. See? Notice what I said? Literally proving my point as it goes on. It isn't about race. It isn't about ethnicity. It isn't about nationality. It's about agreeing with Nazis or not. You either agree with the Nazis or you're a degenerate. Even, okay, say that you're, you're right about Slips uh, in all over the white place. people are going to be the ones that are going to go do all these horrible things. Thank and blah, you. Blah, blah. It's still I'm happy to hear that, Fright Man. I'm happy. Yeah, exactly, Saber Flote. Argument against um, being a multiracial society because it's still an argument that there is a lot of tensions that are going to happen. Uh, shouldn't we want to protect uh, all these groups as well from each other in general? <laughs> I, I think you've been. What have I been? I, I genuinely, I don't think you're a Nazi. Um, I imagine my chat. <laughs> okay, hold on, wait, wait. I, I think my chat's gonna get really mad when I say this. I don't think you're a Nazi. I think you are extremely into the white moderate pill i think is 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 what you is what's happened um i don't i don't want to gish gallop for too much but i'd like to read a quote from mlk's letter from uh birmingham jail because i think mm -hmm. this quote perfectly applies to what you're saying here okay. <clears throat> let me take a nice drink of water first mm. 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 perfect h2o <clears throat> all right this is from martin luther king's letter from birmingham jail I must make two honest confessions to you, my Christian and Jewish brothers. First, I must confess that over the past few years, I've become gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's greatest stumbling block is his stride in his stride towards freedom is not the white citizen's counselor, the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate, yeah, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistic believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time, who constantly advises Fucking the Negro sick to wait letter, for a more convenient way. season. <laughs> Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is much more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. That, there's more to the quote, and I think as it goes on, it, it applies even I'm more. But I think, I, I feel like you've white moderate pilled yourself. Like, the, the people who are on the more radically progressive side that are advocating for just a broader dissolution of the entire system that has informed our, our current conceptions of race, you're claiming those are the people that want to start a race war. It's the same you, kind of narrative from the types that push back against MLK during the civil rights movement. It's the same type true. of white moderate hesitance. It's true. Literally so true, Zan. You fucking nailed her on this one. See. Can you tell me some benefits of having a multiracial society? I I don't think the onus is on me to say there are benefits. I Why? think the onus is on you to You're tell the me the negatives. It, though. I think it's going to happen regardless. I'm just not against it. I haven't had heard any arguments against it. It's natural. I, I don't like know what like you're the one making the argument. We need to stop it. The onus is yeah. on you. I feel like I have made a lot of arguments on why it's bad. <laughs> I. I wouldn't agree, but I guess I could list some things, culture, food, um, stories, uh, getting to meet new people, new friends. I've got plenty of friends that are not white that I'd hate to have never met. Yeah, because there's um, so many I mean... of them here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I met most of them on the internet. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I guess I guess we can go, because I, I have like a list of things we went through, and I guess we'll go to the last yeah. thing. Um, Nick... Jay Fuentes. Yeah, she's really I don't want to fucking annoying. This too much because we're talking about retcon, over. retcon. It's really funny, but just so you know, this this person, Brittany from P Politically Provoked, every like couple weeks or so, she pops up in my chat to shit talk me or try to shit talk me, and she's been banned out of my chat on like all of her alts. It's really funny. She's not only really dumb, but she also is incredibly, incredibly cringy. It's really fucking funny person and okay. i don't like debating about other people but you said that yeah. you uh don't think he's a nazi sure um i do think he's a nazi okay uh, why, yeah she why, does that do you, she does that do to a lot that? of people she's she's a she's a chat brawler she loves to go fucking chat brawl i don't think that nazis are even a thing anymore really yeah i mean he might be like um 
I think he's like, what, isn't he like a paleocon or... Um, well, he's really? a white supremacist. Um, define white supremacist. He believes that black people are inherently inferior to white people. Um, I don't know. He also thinks that the age of consent is a feminist construct. <laughs> okay, that ought to be know. abolished. <laughs> I mean, I can, you can talk I, to I, Mr. Girl about that one, all right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, okay, all right. I mean... Do you, do you believe the Holocaust happened and yes. that six million Jews? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Just checking in. Um, well, I mean, do you got any memes for me? Do I have any memes for you? <laughs> I mean, like any questions, any any talking points, any uh, points you want see. me to write? I like, things yeah. down. Hold on. Let me see if I have gotten through some of them. Um, okay. I just joined. Isn't this supposed to be the left-wing host on Politically Provoked? This is the former left-wing host host of politically provoked now she just calls herself the host of politically provoked she doesn't brand herself as left wing anymore because come on nobody was buying that shit i'm kind of glad we didn't really get into the economic factor because i don't think um it really actually matters that much for what i'm pushing i mean there are economic um issues that i do have as well it's not just this this wasn't like the sole reason i am against immigration um, but <laughs> one thing that actually somebody mentioned to me recently was, you know, with the birth rates and stuff, uh, and I didn't even, it didn't even click to me because I, I do believe that global warming and climate change. Hell yeah, Bertard. That stuff, that's great to hear. But I do. Great game. Like realize that there have been a lot of those advocates who are pushing to not have. Mental Ben got to push back on you. Jumping from one political extreme to the other like that is a sign of BPD. No, it is not. That is not a sign of BPD. I gotta say no. No, 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 no. That is not true. Not true. Have kids because of overpopulation. That kind of shit worries me a little bit as well. Like, why are they pushing to not have children when we have such low birth rates? Um, I'm actually asking. If you, like, if you want to look at a place that's having issues with lower birth rates, mm -hmm. I mean, America is certainly not one of them. We, we have a fairly Wait, decent what? replacement you say America's rate. America doesn't have low birth rates? America does not seem to have a problem no, at do. the moment. Absolutely with, do. Well, <laughs> right now millennials aren't having kids because of the of the current economy and the and the difficulty for them to right. build wealth and get right. a place. But like outside of that, it seems like our, our replacement rate just broadly in this exactly, country is, is exactly. not nearly as bad as it could be. Yeah, uh, if you want to look at a country, a matter of fact, this actually supports my point. Uh, Japan, very, very, very racist country. <laughs> very, very racist. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Japan is a very, very racist. Okay. They sided with Hitler in World War II. It's a very racist country. Um, <laughs> they, they, they are not a big we fan of black people. Then, Let's bring Come on over. Yeah, um, yeah, very xenophobic country. She's got, do you notice how she's been smuck, doing nothing but smuggling and trying to make little quips for the last 30 minutes? Yeah, just go ahead, like, like, we can just listen to this. This is just cope. Very, very racist country. Very, very racist. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, okay. Japan is a very, very racist. They right. sided with Hitler in World War II. It's a very racist country. Um, <laughs> they, they, they are not a big fan of black people. Then, huh? <laughs> Let's bring them on over. Yeah, um, yeah. Very xenophobic country, and uh, because of this, they, they take in like no immigration. They've got very tight immigration. Their birth rates are some are just. Their birth rates are so low. I think pe more people are con committing suicide. Like I think their suicide rates are like starting to catch up with the birth rates in Japan right now, or something like that. Um, very, very, very bad shit. That's not the future I want to see for America. Ironically enough, that's an example of a country that's doing exactly what you're advocating for, and they're not exactly having the best no, time. No, I think it, you're it right. Is, uh, they're not doing well there. But I'm not familiar with Japan, and, and um, all I highly their... recommend looking into it. I will. I will. Absolutely. Um, if you want to send me something too? I'll look at. I'll look at that. No problem. Like I said, I'm yeah. open to being unread pilled. Like, I would love to be unread pilled. This has been nothing well, but, like, yeah. it's not been good for me. I mean, I've gotten a lot of shit because of all these views. I didn't want to have these views, but the, and the red pill is just acknowledging. I didn't want to be a Nazi. It was just all those non-white people. I just couldn't stand all those. Those. I. I. I just was so racist. 
that I couldn't stop from being a Nazi. Issues that exist, blaming it on the wrong groups, and then advocating for the wrong solutions. That's all the Sorry, red pill is. Cut out, it cut out that first part. Say that again. The, all the red pill is, mm -hmm. is acknowledging the same issues, blaming it on the wrong groups, okay. then purporting the wrong possible solutions. That's that's more or less my experience with the red pill. Perhaps. All right. And I and I was like, I was right wing. OK, I was I was. I'll I'll answer that right shit, OK, um, that is what the red pill was to me. What I, made I had you get blue these, pill then? Hearing that the arguments uh, these right wingers were making weren't true. Whenever someone made a lot of arguments that I've heard on the right will point out actual issues in our society. The arguments that convinced me when I was younger were real issues in our society, whether it be the anti-feminist content that pointed out that like men have disproportionately higher suicide rates than women or uh, content that made claims like black people commit more crime than white people for unsocio-socioeconomically related reasons. Um, but when I heard arguments like this, there was no counter out there for me to find. So when I stumbled across content that uh, was actually able to present data that debunked those currently held positions, I got pulled out of it. And now my job is to research all of these topics so that I can debate people on it and just sort of strengthen my positions from there. Was there one particular issue that like got you into the alt right, and then one particular issue that maybe got you out of it? Um, ironically enough, pretty similar to what you're saying. I did actually feel like white men mostly were under attack in this country, and it just seems like as I've gotten older, it just hasn't been borne out in reality. I'm doing just fine. It seems like white men in this country are doing just fine, and uh, it was just sort Damn. of a misguided perspective. If you want to make the argument that people are being oppressed in this country and that white people are facing issues, if anything, it's capitalism causing those problems, not some cabal of people oh, pushing anti-whiteness nice. or, really I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you guys want to go in to the Q&A. We can. Um... We're good to go. No. Let's jump into it. All right. I want to let you know, folks, both of our guests are linked in the description. So if you want to hear more, you certainly can. And that includes if you're listening via the podcast, as we put our guest links in the description box for the podcast as well. But let's jump right into it. First question, probably certain says, Jim Crow and slavery is not CRT. It's That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm it seems sure. more of like a statement than a question. <laughs> right. We do read question or uh, statements. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. I'm just not exactly sure what. Uh, who is. <laughs> okay. Next up. Yeah, Keith let's watch the Q and A. Brittany, I'm enjoying why this. Why does being a minority scare you? Because of how you're treated, you're perpetuating a form of separation. Why not focus on treating minor minorities better? Then you wouldn't have to worry which side you're on. No, I think I think that we should do both. I think we should treat people a lot better. I think we should do both. Let's treat minorities better and treat minorities worse. Genius. Truly, truly, we are engaging on a, on the highest level of ideas here. Oh my god. Oh my god. What a what an what an absolute bargain basement brain we got over here. We got a fucking true soup brain as well but i do think a, it's no secret yo a lot of apples no thank you very much for the tier one is, sub deeply appreciate that well. they're going to be treated like second class citizens but the difference here is the history the minorities have a history where they've been like really fucked over and um it's not good so a lot of people are trying to right the wrongs but when white people become the minority there's not going to be that same sympathy for white people that there is for other minorities who have suffered so all I think right it's gonna... vivian chill the fuck out Chill the fuck out, Vivian. Oh my god. What is going on in chat? Chill the fuck out, everybody. I'll address these after the panel. Everybody fucking vibe. Can we not have blood in the chat right now? My god. It'd be more of like, oh okay, god. you kind of have this coming. You deserve it. Fuck you. Whereas we are not doing that to minorities now. So I do worry about it. I worry about like paying for sins of the past, whatever those might be. Um, and I think that a lot of people should, and I think that people that are pushing some of this anti-white stuff, especially if they are white, are not realizing that this is going to backfire. They're not going to know if you're the good white person or the bad white person if it's purely a racial what? issue. If somebody you are you just did that multiple times. Oh god, this is so stupid. They're coming so from white people. Stupid. They're not going to stop geeky and say, hey, Are you a lefty white person or are you a fucking Nazi white person? They're going to be going for you for your skin color. 
Sam here's his bulldog says, I know it's off topic, but I would it's die okay. for an Sorry. archaeological evidence. Yeah, some arguing is fine. It's just getting a little out of, out of hand. Please make it happen, James. Thanks for that. I'll keep that in mind. Long Nights YouTube and says, amazing how much, quote unquote, certain white people are afraid of the people of this country. Actually learning about the history of this country, it's whitewashed. True. Uh, I, I think that's true. for you, Brittany. Okay, wait, say it again? Sorry. They said, they said, amazing how much certain white people are afraid of the people of this country mm -hmm. while actually learning about the history of this country. It's whitewashed. Certain white people are afraid of the people of this country and it's whitewashed? I think I they're really saying, like, there's a contrast where especially they're saying if you read the history of the United States, it's especially surprising Mm -hmm. to put it charitably uh, they're saying it's surprising that some white people are afraid of themselves getting attacked yeah i don't know why it's surprising though i feel like well, they're, I think they're trying to imply that the history of the u.s has mm -hmm. in actuality been the reverse namely they're trying to suggest that the history would suggest that it's minorities if anybody that should yeah be which well, i'm worried about us becoming a minority so. <laughs> this one from mr Ma literally stupid brain just just genuinely stubborn and stupid monster says anti-white hate is an illusion oh i don't on. think that actually i actually disagree with that i think there is an ironic anti-white hate but i think it's coming from the black separatist types that claim to be on the left but are literally allying with types like the proud boys i think that at the end of the day any racial segregationist policy is only going to result in hurting I both did groups Lesbian. that are uh, yes, affected did. by it I, I don't think that um, racial segregation helps society do you think that james is platforming nazis good question i'll put that into the questions to answer section oh yeah that's true that is very weird isn't it isn't that very weird, uh, Rhodes? I, I agree with you. It's very fucked. It's unfortunate. At all. Amazing. This one coming in from Sunflower says, X, a.k.a. Xander, adult liberals had the exact same reaction as the sobbing fourth grader when Trump got elected. Colleges implemented new programs to aid the trauma. I... I don't know what that is referring to. I became a right winger when Trump got elected. That well, the Trump getting elected led to me moving more to the right. So I don't know where that's what that's for. I think they're. I think what they're trying to say is I think it went back to when you had mentioned the the fourth grade girl who was afraid that when Obama became president that there was going to be like persecution and that Obama would be Hitler or something to that effect. They're saying when Trump became president, they're saying that. You know, people were saying this is, you know, Hitler and it that this is that there were new programs to aid the trauma at colleges. Well, yeah, he got me, I guess, or they got me. That is true, I imagine. Maybe. Probably happened. This one from Elusive Viper. That's a great way to handle the it. second largest and largest growing demographic isn't blacks, it's Latinos. Mm -hmm. why, all, all, why all of this focus on what will still be the third largest racial group. It's well for me it's not like technically mm. about like blacks or anything like that. Mm. It's just again good question. Mm. The anti white stuff that we are pushing on people. There it I mean, like I said earlier, even white people are hating white people. Everybody has a grievance against white against white people. So us just becoming a minority really worries me. So it's not about I know that yeah, like blacks are not in gonna be the majority anytime soon. Like that's kind of obvious. But by the way, just so you know, anybody who says blacks is is there's just like a that that increases your likelihood of being racist by ninety percent, especially if it's unprompted. Like, if somebody just says blacks unprompted, that means, like, your likelihood of being a racist is, like, 90% or above. Now, it, there could be some strange 10% chance that they're not a racist. But, holy fuck. Anybody who says like that, like, that's a thing that you normally learn when you're, like, a child. Like, guys, no one refers to people like that. Because it's really rude. Yeah, obviously when they say the blacks, yeah, because they're making 
black people into a, um, a, uh, a, into a monolith. It's weird. It, the fact that... Yeah, but that's... But, would... Okay, but, but, okay. Rhodes, Zizek is literally a Slovenian raccoon, okay? I don't think that I can analyze Zizek's uh, appropriate language, okay? I, I just, I just can't. I don't know any, I don't know enough, okay? I'm just, I'm sorry. I've also seen the clip. All right, everybody quit the fight fucking fighting. Chill, chill, chill. Everybody stop fighting. It's all good. Just stop, stop fighting. I'll talk about all these things at the end. I'm doing a debate review. We got to get to the end of it so I can review it. To become the minority is more my concern. This one coming in from Chess. <laughs> they embraced me and told me you can call me gamer. Yeah, I know. I know, nuts. I know what you're talking about. 119 says debate title. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Oh, not reading that. Rashad Abdul Salam says, Xander, if you're pro-integration, then do you disagree with blacks who want majority black neighborhoods with black schools, black banks, and stores, etc.? If yeah. not, why can't whites open openly desire the same? Yeah, no, I don't believe in that. No, I, I don't believe in, like, black-only neighborhoods mm -hmm. and black majority schools and all that. No, I'm not in favor of that, and I don't think white people should be in favor of it either. I think that full-on integration is the way that we defeat racism. It seems like it's borne out in the data, and um, that's what I'm following. True, Denise Chilster! Brittany, if you convince everyone to treat racial minorities the way you want to be treated, mm -hmm. then as a minority, you would be treated well. Do you disagree, and why? <laughs> I wish it was like that. I really, really do wish it was like that. It would be, it would make everything a lot easier. But again, this is one of those like fantasy worlds where, okay, um, we want something to be a certain way, but I think that the damage is kind of almost already done. No matter if we all changed our tune, if we all did all- Remember, she literally has not given a single example of white people being persecuted outside of some random guy on CNN saying there are a fuckload of white nationalist terrorists. All this crazy, like, amazing stuff. Um, I don't think it would matter. I think we would still deal with some of this racial revenge Holy that's going to happen. And I really do think it's going to happen. You got it, Mr. White Male says, anti-white stats don't go up because they don't get classified as hate crimes. I think they're saying cope. they don't go up. That's called cope. Especially during, I think this came in when people... Uh, when they talked about when Trump got into office. Yeah, that's just not true. If you if you throw a rock at someone's head and scream, fuck you, whitey, Be right back. Um, I'm bathroom. pretty sure that's a hate crime. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe white uh, crimes against white people for their race aren't considered hate crimes in this country. I doubt it, though. This one from a snake was right. said, America is the greatest country on Earth and the most multi-ethnic. Anyone can live together. It's wokesters who can't mix with American culture. Oh. Well, they were right in the first half. America is the greatest, uh, most uh, multi-ethnic country ever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think the Wokesters, uh, that's, an, that's a new one. Are you a Wokester, wokes Xander? Uh, I think this person thinks I am, and they invented the term as far as I can tell, so I guess so, if they invented it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't seem to agree. I, I think I do a pretty good, good job of integrating into society. Okay. Juicy, this one coming in from Forward Tribe says, what do you think of the Dalai Lama and what about when he says Europe should be for Europeans? Who's that for? I would Probably think it's for me. Sander. Uh, I don't know enough about the Dalai Lama to, uh, to confirm or deny whether or not that's an actual quote, but uh, <laughs> who cares? Juicy, this one coming in from Kwani Upstate says, if she isn't Native American, does she think her ancestors shouldn't have come here? Will she leave the U.S. if her ancestors came here? <laughs> okay, this is fun. Um, so, yeah, I get this whole Native American thing. And, um, yeah, sure, if everybody wants to leave that's not Native American, let's do that. <laughs> It's called find a different country and we can go um, find our own white country. We can all find our own black country. We can all find our own uh, Mexican country. We can all do that. Let's go do that. We'll just all would have you, our own countries. Would you go move to the white country if there was like an all white sort of like ethno state started up? I'm not sure that they would take me. 
Quantity upstate strikes again, says the U.S. is and always has been a melting pot, so more babies who grow up American is a good thing. True. That's why we need to go to war with and annex Canada. We need to take all of the U.K. We need America needs to conquer every every single country, the entire world, and everybody needs to become American. Okay, God. we're gonna call. We're gonna rename Earth to America. I do actually think um, that the entire world should just speak English. <laughs> like, I would be totally down for that. So um... it'd be convenient, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think. Actually, ironically enough, a lot of the world right now speaks English, and a lot of countries, like uh, in Europe especially, even if they aren't uh, like English-speaking countries, um, typically like English is taught as a second class. I think the same is done in like Japan and a lot of uh, countries in Asia and whatnot, um, Central Europe. I, I think like English is like a required language to learn for a lot of those countries. There's one coming in from Chris Gammon says, for Brittany, what precise skin tones do you advocate for being barred from entering the country? I mean, come on. I, it's not about, like, again, I don't have any hate for anybody. I, like, really, really wish it wasn't like this. I don't like that it's like this. I would be happy in a multicultural, multiracial society if it worked. It just doesn't. So I, it's not like I'm wanting it to be this way. I really don't. <laughs> so I, I, I can't, I just want to close the borders. That's <laughs> This one coming in from Nugget Man says, do they, they say not none white debating white replacement what the i'm confused by that nugget man you got to clear up pivot cyroy says not sure if it was asked already but Brittany, why don't you want to be a minority in your country are they treated badly or something yeah of course minorities are always treated badly well nobody should want to become a minority <laughs> wait aren't you, even you, you brought up the South. I actually, sorry, I don't want to derail from the question no, the Q and A too much, but I'll make it quick. Um, ironically enough, despite the violence that has happened in the I'm countryside back. in South uh, uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. despite being a uh, proportionally number wise a mm -hmm. minority group in that country, white people still currently hold the vast majority of wealth and power in don't, South Africa. Yes, yeah, I don't know about how how what kind of uh, wealth they mm. hold. I got to rewind um, twenty seconds. All right, that... you did badly or something. Yeah. Hi, Roy says, not sure if it was asked already, but Brittany, why don't you want to be a minority in your country? Are they treated badly or something? Yeah, of course. Minorities are always treated badly. Well, nobody should want to become a minority. What? <laughs> Wait, aren't... You, even you, you brought up the South. I actually, sorry, I don't want to derail from the question, no, the Q and A too much, but I'll make it quick. Um, ironically enough, despite the violence that has happened in the countryside in South uh, uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. despite being a uh, proportionally number wise a mm -hmm. minority group in that country, white people still currently hold the vast majority of wealth and power in don't, South Africa. Yes, yeah, so I don't know about how how what kind of uh, wealth they hold and stuff, um, but I do a know lot. that they were a able lot. to hold on to a lot of power because they were suppressing Holy media, shit. they were doing a lot of stuff where they were not able to kind of get any access and that was kind of holding it under control. Once it happened, it did wait, not wait, wait, do wait, well. What? 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 She's literally bullshitting. Just making shit up. Yeah, they kind of, the white people were like, they couldn't do things on TV. For white people, they were taking their land, they were taking their, they were, there's a lot of killings going on, there's all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, killings, uh, yeah, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's making shit up. This is an ass poll. Just straight up an ass poll. That was happening, there was a lot of revenge, and um, I don't want that to happen here. Well, South Africa went from an apartheid state to mm -hmm. not in through like a revolutionary action yeah literally yeah. cherry a couple decades ago okay. obviously like there there was violence compared we fought a war over ending slavery and that's more or less the 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 equivalent that was happening they over weren't there slaves though not slaves but there was a highly highly racist society in which black people were considered sure. lesser than than white people it, it's somewhat comparable to a modern day mm. uh civil war you could make the argument the closest what do you mean mm. do you hear do you hear this Okay, this is why I, okay, I think right now we can kind of stop and go to the, the, I think we've got the point, okay? Can we, uh-oh. Hmm, what's going on here? 
There we go. All right. I think we've had enough Q&A questions for the time being, okay? I want to talk about a couple of things going on here, okay? A couple of things I want to talk about, okay? So, uh, this is why I release my anger and fury on right-wingers. Yeah, this is why. Now, hold on a second. There's a couple of things I want to talk about here, okay? Let's talk about this whole thing, okay? The, the obvious question, the elephant in the room, is was Xander Hall correct in saying that he thinks that Brittany is not a Nazi? Personally, I think Zan is being too kind. But I understand why he's being charitable. But let me explain what my position on Brittany is, okay? I think Brittany is a crypto Nazi. And what that means is somebody who, which is most Nazis, by the way, most Nazis are crypto Nazis, okay? Um, most Nazis do will not admit that they're a Nazi because they know that Nazis are disgusting and abhorrent. They know their view is disgusting and violent and people don't like it. And that's why they put on their little masks. They do this thing. They do the little nose taps. They do the little wink, wink, nudge, nudge. They've always done this. It's part of their tactic. It's literally pushed by their main, their main magazines. The Daily Fucking Stormer constantly talks about hiding your power level. Don't let people know how racist you really are. Just keep it to yourself until the time is right. And the reason why they're like that is because Nazis are cowards, first of all. Nazis are deeply, deeply cowardly people, as is visible in this entire conversation. Uh, Brittany has been whining and crying and quivering in her boots, which works very well if you're a white woman who's crying about how the big scary black people are going to come get you or the big scary Asian people are going to come get you or the big scary Spanish people are going to come get you. But that's the entire debate. The entire conversation was Brittany from po politically provoked, quivering in her boots about how scared she is that black people exist and are having children on their own. It's a very weird position. But the truth is that Nazis are always cowards. How can you live your entire life quivering at the existence of people who look slightly different than you and not be a complete coward. The truth is that Nazis are terrified of everything that they don't already know. They are terrified of new ideas. They are terrified of being inferior to everyone else around them. They are deeply insecure people. They are deeply hierarchical people. And they believe that brute violence... And manipulation is the way that you feel better. But you don't. Ever. Because it doesn't work. And also, because you're a fucking coward who's afraid of, of phantoms. And what we see throughout this whole thing is Brittany literally making things up to justify that fear. Not informing the fear. Not inquiring or inquisiting the fear. Not finding out if the fear is valid. But instead, literally inventing up fake things to further justify the fear. This is why I call it fear-mongering. Now, when I say that I think Britney is a crypto-Nazi, there are reasons for it, okay? Now, does this mean I'm going to go around calling Britney a Nazi? Yes, actually, it does. Um, yeah, yeah, I think Xan has gotten a lot better. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to call, I call, I'm going to call, I don't care. I'll call Brittany a Nazi as frequently as I want to. I don't really care. I think, I think it's pretty fair. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Anybody could call her whatever the fuck you want. Um, sure. I can't, I can't cherry because of the ban. I can't react to it because of the ban. I wish I could, but I can't because of the ban. Gotta be careful with that shit. It's gonna get me banned. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I don't care. I, I, I think it's pretty obvious, but here's the thing. It's really difficult, right? And most of the time 
it uh it, it doesn't it doesn't matter no you can't you can't jerry you can't react to uh people who've been banned yeah you can't unfortunately um i don't think it's usually useful to spend a lot of time trying to prove someone is a uh a a, a nazi however i think there are times in which a very easy case can be made and i think this is one of them Brittany from politically provoked partners with and platforms fuck loads of nazis and fascists and other extreme right-wing positions Brittany herself admits that she is a red pillar who believes in white in great replacement she fears white people being made a minority because in her words the blacks will treat her bad someday she makes up all kinds of conspiratorial nonsense to back up her fears she argues for the existence of a white ethno state and she backs up other people who believe in making ethno states as well and her discord was crawling with nazis to the degree that it has been destroyed twice by discord and her audience is crawling with nazis and she jq'd in this conversation she said it was banned more times wow maybe more it might be more oh really uh that'd be cool D if you have screenshots and shit lena you should dm that to me they don't call her the lefty anymore they used to they don't anymore so it is it technically possible that britney is not truly a nazi i mean come on guys maybe maybe sure uh but yeah Voss said that he wonders if britney is so stupid that she doesn't realize she's a nazi no i don't think that's true and there's a couple of reasons why which is one nazis are always stupid they're always stupid nazis are fucking idiots are you kidding me they're so fucking stupid okay being stupid doesn't mean you can't be a nazi but also I, while i do think that britney is indeed a very stupid person i don't think she's as stupid as other people give her credit for i think the fact that she has set up and platformed a fuckload of nazis that she basically enacted a a, a fucking scripted how i left the left on on as a part of a pr ploy and that she plays very dumb and uses lots of dog whistles indicates that she is probably not as stupid as some people say she is i do think she's still very stupid but again i think all nazis are pretty stupid I think she doesn't care whether she's uh whether it's of great harm i think she's just a racist i wish i was there for chud logic's talk with mr girl was it good i'm i don't know maybe i i, don't, I really hate this mr girl shit i really fucking hate that shit anyway it's not neither here nor there we can talk about that after so uh i i think that Brittany is a malignant actor who is obviously and blatantly dishonest doesn't care about the truth at all uh is flippant with her beliefs and is very very passively racist so uh i don't know just gotta say uh i, I don't have a lot of faith in in Brittany from uh politically provoked i i don't i i gotta say i think she's a nazi she definitely knows at least she knows what she's doing at least up to being a fascist so if you want to if you want to split hairs over whether she's a Nazi, I would say that the JQing should probably push you over into the Nazi category. But yeah, there were a couple of other little comments that I wanted to read from from the chat. So I answered Mix Dizzy. Mix Dizzy said, "So we're saying she was probably crypto the entire time and hiding her power level." I think so personally. That is my theory. My theory is that uh is that Britney has always been a crypto 
Yeah, I would charge him. My my char I, I don't I don't I don't debate people like him cheap. You gotta make it really worth my time. Um Sober Flote says, Do you have any theory about why Brittany is so keen on insisting she's ready to be reconvinced of leftism? Is this posturing to make rightoids seem so super logical and strong? Yes. That is all they do. That's why every right winger that we talk about had a video titled Why I Left the Left. They, it is essential. It is essential to their mythology to believe, to, to sell people on the idea that they were a stupid, naive liberal until they found the inconvenient truths, the uncomfortable truths. It is, it is part and parcel of a, of a very old tactic. Yeah. Of course she wants to bait lefties into engaging. Yeah, just convince me it's a bait. Of course it's a bait. The thing is, the good news is, she's really stupid. And I think Xander Hall handled this very well. Um, so this goes into the last little bit that I want to talk about uh, in this review. Okay? Because there's a lot to talk about still. By the way, if you are still here and watching and enjoying yourself, I highly recommend subscribing to the Demon Mama YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Demon Mama, okay? Seriously, it's fucking sick. Here we go. I'm going to put it in all the chats. Forward slash C forward slash Demon Mama. Please go and subscribe to the channel. I would really, really, really like to have you all be subs, sub subscribers. And if you could smack the like button while you're there, that would be fantastic. Yeah, fuck Twitch politics. I don't give a shit anymore. I I've been done with them for a while, but I'm totally, I'm like totally, I I'm just very uh, unconvinced that there's anything worth worth fighting for there. Twitch politics is a cesspit. It's a joke. Anyway. Or the puppy gets the laser eyes. <laughs> Yeah, of course I have to do ads. What the fuck? How the fuck else am I supposed to grow? Grow my channel? What the fuck do you mean? Anyway, let's talk about the last part. Platforming. Do I agree with Zan's post-debate takes? Come. Yes, I do agree. I do agree very much. Very much. I agree. Come. Indeed. Come, 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 come. Okay. So, um, okay, cool. I'll go over those and we'll talk about it maybe uh, um, in the future. I can't really... Well, actually, let's take a look. Let's see if I can get some of these up here. Holy shit. Okay, I literally can't show these. Uh, so I was just sent a bunch of random screenshots from the politically provoked Discord, and it's literally just people spamming slurs. And talking about killing people with low IQs. They had an, a, a debate about Holocaust denial hosted on their server. There's also some leaked DMs from politically provoked Brittany talking about how she actually doesn't give a shit and people should be able to call other people slurs. They had a channel called Racism. Holy shit. Wow, that's pretty bad. That's pretty fucked. Holy shit. God, that is so many slurs. That is a lot of slurs. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, the shit they do on DLive is just insane Nazi shit. Yep. So let's talk about the platforming aspect, okay? So I had a question from Pros Renegade. Do you think that James is platforming Nazis? And of course, the following question would be, do you think Zan is platforming Nazis? Do I think that James platformed Nazis? Obviously. Yes. Obviously. There's there's no way around that. Um, there's There is no way around the fact that James is platforming Nazis. Um... 
Uh, his channel, uh, his chat is full of Nazis. It's unfortunate. I don't, I don't really know why he does the thing that he does. Maybe it's, maybe I'm sure he makes a decent amount of money. Um, but you know, okay. There've been a million debate shows. There've been a million neutral debate shows that do all kinds of topics. Uh, I haven't been on politic. I haven't been on modern day debates in a while because, um, personally, um, I, I just, I don't know. I got tired of debating my existence as a trans person. Yeah. Um, modern day debates. I just, I, I didn't want to do them anymore because I just kept getting invites to, to just be like, oh, can you, can you go up against this Nazi that says trans people are mentally ill? I got like three invites for that. And so I just didn't want to do it anymore because I know you guys don't want to see it. I don't want to do it. So, yeah. Um, as for Zan, nah. I mean, in a way, but I think that the way Zan handles his debates these days is a lot better than the past. And I think Zan really has learned a lot, which is that he goes in prepared. He goes in with the audience in mind and he prepares. He, pre he prepares for his debates and also that he argues with the goal of deflating fear mongering, which I think is really, really important. Capo says, is that not its own form of transphobia to reduce you down to having valuable political opinions on the topic of trans identity and not inviting you to other debates? Oh, that happens all the time. That's been the story of my life for two years. I mostly get invited to debates about trans topics. And not just because I'm trans and they want trans representation. But because I'm the only trans person. And so all those debate invites always come to me. I'm not literally the only trans person. But like... Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm like the only, tr literally the only trans person. But I'm the main trans... I was, for a long time, the main trans debater. And other people would get ignored. Because everybody had beef with me. And then I started to realize that the, that the, the debate space is totally fucked. Because there's only one role that trans people are allowed to play. And that's the trans SJW uh, uh, heel. That's the only role. So let's talk about the platforming thing. Um, one of my things that I think is like, I don't think that we can just ignore all Nazis. I think that debates have to happen, that debates can be valuable. Obviously, I'm a debater. I, be I believe very much in the value of debate. But I think one of the problems that has happened in the past is that people took a, 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 a spectacle first approach as opposed to thinking about what the effect of the debate would be and how it plays out. I think that Zan is in a unique position. And it's funny. I got to give credit to Zan for this, okay? Because Xander Hall is somebody who I, I even I have personally advised Xander Hall to uh, consider moving away from debate because he's got a lot of other talents. But Xander Hall instead, and this is perfectly fine, obviously. I'm just saying what my personal advice to him has been, has instead chosen to learn how to do debate really well. And I think Xan has gotten really fucking good. And in fact, I think Xander Hall has become, in some ways, a, a better version of what he once wanted to be in the past. I don't know if, if this is still his goal, but I know that in the past, Xan used to kind of talk about de-radicalizing people and pulling people away from pipelines. And I think he's actually getting to a position where he can do that, where he is a a gamer, a nor a relatively normie gamer, who is able to go and have these conversations from a very non pretentious, non confrontational perspective, like not not immediately confrontational, but say, hey, we're going to talk about these topics. I disagree with you, but I'm not contentious to the audience, and I think that's pretty good. I think it's hard to strike that balance. Piftle Cakes, thank you so very much for the three tier one gifted subs. Deeply appreciated. You make this show possible. Thank you very much. Um, 
but also there's another thing which Zan does really well, which I think a lot of other people can't pull off, which is that I think Zan actually does manage to speak to a lot of those like sort of lost, like purposeless gamer types. And I think he does so very effectively by deflating the fears. Because keep in mind that a lot of people are uh, are scared right now. A lot of people are terrified of all kinds of things right now. Um, and uh, and that includes gamers. By the way, thank you again for another gifted sub. Piftal Cakes, deeply appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Um, and I think what Zan's able to do is he's able to go into these conversations and have fun without being like a debate bro. Like your typical debate bro. But he prepares enough, he takes them seriously enough to know what he's talking about and lighthearted enough that it doesn't put off, uh, you know, gamers who, uh, you know, gamers who, who, uh, who, uh, aren't, who are, who are like leaning towards the right. So I don't know. I, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. And I think he's getting, I think he's getting really good at what he does and I will support him. It's really funny because a lot of people, um, there's a lot of people who are angry about Xander Hall, like, uh, debating Lauren Southern that one time. And I actually think, um, I actually think that was, and people will remember, I had a, a dissenting opinion there. I thought he did really good. And I think over time that, that my argument has been validated on that point which is I think his debate still holds up. He made a mistake, that's for sure, but a mistake is different. A, a factual mistake does not mean the entire thing was a mistake. Three Monic with the three gifted tier one subs. Thank you very much. What if Sonic were real? Well, he'd be going very fast, of course. So I don't know. Um, okay, here's the funny thing, Wolfgar. I actually think Vosh is better at the aggression Okay, Vosh, okay, uh, how do I describe this, okay? There is not a single tactic that works well for debate. You understand? Just like, there. okay, okay, y'all ever watch Dragon Ball Z? Y'all ever watch Dragon fucking Ball Z? In Dragon Ball Z, there's a bunch of different characters who have different abilities. And they all fight in different styles. Some of them have a special ability, like... Special Beam Cannon! That sort of thing. Some of them have Gallic Gun. And some of them have Kame, Hame, ha! Some of them have Destructo Disc. All these types of shit, you know? They all got their own special abilities. And I think Xan is getting really, really good at debating uh, the people, the people like, like, Brittany from Politically Provoked and Lauren Southern. I think Zan does a very good job debating um, these sort of like uh, teehee, just asking questions types. Uh... Vosh is, oh yeah, Vosh is a very good blood sport debater. I am also a very good blood sport debater. Here's the thing. Um, oh, absolutely, Weeberry. Absolutely. Um... I think that Zan does really good against crypto types, and I think Vosh is a gladiator, okay? Vosh is a real fucking good gladiator, okay? I'm just saying that. I, I, and, and by the way, just so you know, uh, we've been, like, over Christmas, we, we, like, watched, like, a fuckload of, uh, while I was playing games and stuff, I went and watched a fuckload of old debates. I watched old Zan debates, I watched old me debates, I watched old Vosh debates, I watched old Chud Logic debates, we watched a whole bunch of old debates, because I was just like, hey, it'll be interesting to go and take a walk through memory lane and see how everybody's styles have changed over time. Um, and, you know, Vosh is still fucking really like Vosh's old debates where he blows the fuck out of a Nazi are still really fucking good. <laughs> true, Vivian. <laughs> true, Vivian. Vosh has gotten Vosh is very good at debate in general, but I actually think that debates like the the free form like blowing out random people debates are where Vosh shines the most. When Vosh goes up against, like, uh, 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 
uh, hooligan Nazis who were like, hey, yeah, yeah, 1488. Um, and uh, I think like he's really fucking good, like super fucking good at those types of debates to the point where like, I, I've been, uh, I just, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of his, uh, his, his, uh, video game stream debates. Oh, the kill stream. We watched the kill stream one. Actually, we watched his old kill stream one. The one with the tactical N word. Yes, I will admit that. Um, Rodog, yes. I used to, when I used to debate with people on like, like before I was even on the internet, my style is an aggressive style. I have an aggressive style. I like going up against people who I can expose. Whereas I think what Zan is very good at is that Zan is very good at deflating fear mongerers. And reaching into the audience of people who are scared and could be pulled into like a uh, into like a pipeline and going, guys, just come play Minecraft and learn some shit about the world with me. I I think it would be super cool. I don't know. I I think it would be super cool to see Zan, uh, like do a whole lot of like cool political education stuff while he games. Because imagine all these people who are coming from these debates and then going into his chat and him being able to teach them shit while they're playing games together. I think that'd be fucking sick. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, Road Dog. There are different styles. I think it's good, though. Pros Renegade. I still think that's important. I think a lot a lot of people got tired over the last year. Um, something that's really unfortunate about the debate space over the last year is that, like, all of the conservatives have completely and utterly retreated because they got trounced so hard. The truth is, making fun of Nazis is super effective. Embarrassing Nazis destroys them. Do you know how many Nazis have had literal mental breakdowns after losing a public debate uh, where they got completely and utterly embarrassed? Like, holy fucking shit. They do. They have, me like, Milo, y oh my god, there's so many fucking dudes. There's so many, it's like a tale as old as time. I, hypocrite, is a great example. Ethan, Ralph, like, people have, like, there are so many of these people who have complete derangement. They literally unhinge their lives. Because remember, being a Nazi, being a fascist, is about assuaging a deep, deep insecurity. All Nazis are super, super insecure. There's a whole lot we could talk about with this. We could talk about how racial violence is always fixated on, uh, on people being, uh, 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 emasculated so I actually think emasculating Nazis can be very very effective who's the methodical trap setting debater who springs it when the least uh, the enemy least expects it mm -hmm. Zan turns zombies back into humans. Vosh just fucking destroys them. No, I think that Vosh handles cleaning up, like killing the Nazis that are in, 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 that are biting people. Whereas Zan is really good at distracting, distracting the zombies so that the people who are in danger of being bit don't get bit at all. I think that's what Zan is very good at. And I hope that he keeps learning that and pushing that craft to the best of the, uh, the best, uh, way that he can. Do I ever plan on playing Kenshi on stream? Yes, I would really, really like to play Kenshi on stream. I've been playing so many hours of Kenshi over the last few months. So I don't know. Yeah, I think that might be some, there might be some accuracy there, Hippie Punk. I think Zan's been on a real, real good roll, and that makes me happy.